satisfied the time is exactly nine o'clock now. Um, when I look at the attendance of the committee, uh, Chairperson already, we've got a uh, um, uh, sufficient uh, um, uh, number uh, of members for us that we can, we can, we can start the meeting. Uh, I can see also the DM is coming, is coming in just right now. Uh, over to you, Chairperson. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Poltina. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, honorable members of the Portfolio Committee on Tourism, uh, members of uh, the department led by the executive, uh, who is the minister in the DM, uh, and the DG, Mr. Tarage, who is the accounting officer of the uh, department. Uh, allow me to take this opportunity to welcome you to our portfolio committee meeting for this uh, 1st of February, which has been called for the committee to receive a report with regards to financial and non financial performance Recording in progress. of the department for the first and the second quarter. Uh, you are most welcome to the portfolio committee. Honorable members, this is your meeting. You will be given the opportunity to engage and deliberate with the department concerning their performance in terms of their predetermined objectives. Uh, and also allow, we will also allow the department to be able to give us reasons for uh, their non-performance and uh, where they have not received, where they have not been able to meet uh, their targets as, as planned. I will now uh, invite uh, yourself a uh, secretariat of the of, of the committee to be able to um, flight our agenda so that we can be able to look into it Honorable members uh, of the Portfolio Committee on Tourism, uh, the agenda is in front of us. I will now invite yourselves, honorable members, uh, to consider the adoption of this agenda before we continue. I will note you, uh, uh, if you use the icon, to indicate that you want to speak. I invite Honorable uh, Sheila Kaiko. Morning, Chair. Morning, everyone. Uh, Chairperson, uh, I see the agenda. I propose that this agenda be adopted as it is. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Sheila. Can I invite another member who is willing to second the proposal as tabled by, as moved by a Honorable Kreko? Honorable Chairperson, good morning. This I is note, Honorable April. I note you, Honorable April. I second. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, this will be the agenda that we'll be following. Uh, in terms of our proceedings uh, for the day. I will now uh, invite the Secretariat to take us through. Uh, apologies. Uh, oh, oh, good morning again, Chairperson. Chair, I've got, I've got um, uh, three apologies here with me. One, uh, it's, it's from, from the Chairperson who is still on sick leave. The second one is from uh, Honorable Defreitas, uh, who is doing um, is busy with the um, uh, with the party business, uh, and he will not be here in the meeting for today. And then the third one is for from 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 the minister, uh, Chairperson. We've received the minister's apology, 
uh, this morning uh, that she, she has attended a cabinet uh, committee meeting. Those are the three apologies that we have received, Mr. Person. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Poltina. Honorable members, the committee this morning um, is considering the first quarter and the second quarter for the financial and non-financial performance information of the Department of Tourism simultaneously. As the greater part of the previous term was taken by the statutory requirements on the preparation for the tabling of the uh, B, triple uh, uh, R uh, reports in the committee. The committee should note that the department uh, honorable members uh, did not perform well in the two quarters under review, as there were delays uh, in the implementations of planned uh, projects. The delays uh, led to under expenditure by various programs within uh, the department. Uh, on the financial and non-financial performance, um, honorable members, the second quarter, the department spent um, over 800 uh, million uh, of its 2.4 billion allocated for the financial year. Uh, this denotes that uh, the department had only 36% of the allocation of its budget uh, that was spent. Uh, this, this pattern also continued to the uh, next uh, financial uh, next quarter, which is the second quarter. Uh, we also note, uh, uh, honorable members, that there were some serious issues of fruitless and wasteful expenditure within uh, the reporting, uh, which amounted uh, which amounted to about 12,000. Uh, we also note with serious concerns, uh, the irregular expenditure for the awarding of uh, tenders and codes for this financial year under review. We will then allow the department uh, honorable members to speak to us with, uh, and be able to explain to us in terms of uh, these issues uh, of concerns that we are bringing before uh, the, themselves and also which we are noting as the committee in terms of their performance. We also, uh, with serious concerns from the committee, the underachievement. We will allow the department to be able to take us through and be able to give confidence mm. to the portfolio committee on these uh, non-performance for the for the two quarters under under review. With those few words, uh, honourable members, uh, I will hand over to the department led by the DM, uh, who will be able to take us through their presentation. And after that, we will be given the opportunity to engage and be able to iron out issues that we believe uh, needs to be ironed out as we are only carrying out our duties as members of parliament who are tasked with the responsibility to play an oversight on the resources uh, and also the service delivery um, uh, objectives of uh, the department as mandated uh, to us. This is the opportunity, uh, Honorable DM. Uh, good, 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 good morning, uh, uh, Honorable Members. Good morning, Chair and the DG and the team. We we want to take the, this opportunity to thank you, members of the portfolio committee, for giving us giving us an opportunity to come and make a presentation in relation to the briefing on the quarterly performance report. 
which briefing and for the quarterly performance report will mainly cover a, firstly the service delivery environment uh, and then secondly it will be the first and the second quarter performance presentation uh, and then lastly will be the the financial uh, management or the, the financial uh, resource uh, information basically what what you want to indicate is that uh, as we've as we've started when we're starting the the, the financial year uh, uh, on the roll members will recall that we are still operating under the the strict uh, conditions of risk adjusted strategy as part of a process of managing the the COVID-19 pandemic. And after the budget was passed, we we had experienced various uh, uh, lockdowns or restrictions, uh, which were informed by the break of the Delta virus, the Delta virus, and and the Omicron virus, uh, which in a way made some of our work uh, 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 challenging because of the restriction that, that, that we impose as a result of that. We, 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 we will then present these challenges to yourself in terms of what, in, and in the context of the service delivery environment as we implement the recovery plan, which was adopted, and which the APP that we're presenting, uh, uh, the recovery plan was used as a basis uh, for for the APP. So we'll be indicating what are the bottlenecks, what are the challenges uh, that makes us not to be where we want it to be in relation to the recovery. The DG will, will, will then be able to take us through, will make the presentation uh, in relation to the service delivery environment, the, the quarterly performance, uh, 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 there are programs that, that we have not done very well in the first quarter and the second quarter, uh, but there are those that were doing very well, though not 100% in some, but uh, 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 we were doing very well in some of them. Uh, and then we'll then explain in details the the, the performance with the, with the particular focus on the remedial actions or the reasons for failure to achieve certain things. And the remedial, remedial action, what does that we need to do to, re, to, to remedy the situation going forward? And then lastly, the, the financial situation, uh, where are we in the budget and also the issues around fruitless and wasteful and fruitless and wasteful expenditure how did it occur and what steps has been taken? The issue of the irregular expenditure, uh, uh, what, what, what has happened and what is it that we are doing uh, as a department in relation to that irregular expenditure? So, so without waste of time, uh, I will then uh, ask the DG uh, to either make a presentation or delegate somebody to make a presentation. Did you? Thank you, DM. Uh, good morning to the honorable chairperson and honorable members, uh, DM and uh, the colleagues. Um, I am going to request uh, that Petra, thank you. We will be dealing with, uh, I will be dealing specifically with uh, the service delivery improvement and after which I'm going to ask each of the DDGs to give an account of what, uh, uh, what, 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 what the, the, the progress uh, in terms of implementation of our APP is uh, within their respective programs.
Honorable Chairperson, as DM had stated, we had uh, uh, an approved, a cabinet approved tourism sector recovery plan, and, and which, which essentially contextualizes all our efforts in terms of implementation towards the recovery of the sector. We had a, 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 an environment which uh, was quite challenging. Um, we, we saw a number of waves coming through um, and, and uh, from time to time, uh, dependent on uh, the particular waves uh, strength and the number of cases that we were seeing, uh, the, the recommendations that were being made uh, by, by, by uh, the, 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 the various bodies to, to the entropy and, and uh, some of the decisions that then came through, we found that it was difficult an environment for sustenance of operations. Uh, to give an example in this area is that there was a time where uh, during uh, towards the end of uh, the first quarter where we had uh, the entire Houghton on lockdown. The country was not necessarily on lockdown, but Houghton was on lockdown. Now, when you've got something like that, um, you directly immediately impact on uh, the traffic flow to uh, some of uh, the uh, tourism nodes in and around uh, the, the Houghton area. In particular, um, you, would, you, would, you would take note of the fact that um, most of the traffic, uh, the domestic traffic that goes to places like Northwest, um, in and around uh, these areas, around uh, uh, the, the, the Janala district in particular, uh, all that traffic largely, all, all, all that traffic largely emanates from Houghton. Uh, if you take uh, Honorable Chairperson, the traffic that goes to places like your water bag in the Popo, it largely emanates from Houghton. Uh, but again, um, because one could not then fly uh, to, to the other destinations and so on, and Houghton actually being the central hub, that also had its own impact. So when you go to places like uh, uh, Hood Sprague, which largely uh, is dependent on, on, on traffic flow, particularly, uh, you know, people fly to those places. And so that, that, that would have been uh, heavily, heavily impacted. So would have been uh, the, the Northern KZ, North, North uh, West KZ10 uh, around the, the areas of Drakensberg and so on, uh, as well as uh, the areas of Free State, particularly these areas around the Golden Gate and so on. All of these were directly affected uh, by that particular lockdown. So we will see at a later stage, it does then translate in uh, what you would see with regards to uh, the, the extent to which accommodation would have been performing, the extent to which food and beverage and so on would have been performing, all of those, uh, you would then be able to see that indeed it actually had a direct impact. Um, what, what, was really good uh, from the side of government that we uh, are quite happy that it was there for a considerably uh, longer period of time was uh, the, the, the TERS, uh, the Temporary Employee Relief Scheme. Uh, had it not been for this, we would have actually seen a whole lot of people without any form of income for a considerably longer period of time. And these, we think, uh, really, really cushioned uh, a, a whole number of people, but also assisted business in the sense that they could then focus on uh, really uh, keeping their, 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 sorting out their own debts and so on, whilst they understand that their workers at that particular point in time would also get some level of, uh, of, of, of assistance. Um, they, 
social unrest, um, the July social unrest, uh, they, they had a huge, huge impact on us, um, direct and indirect. Um, the, the industry was reporting uh, essentially a shutdown during that particular period. Uh, but besides that, um, we, we, we had people that were canceling their bookings because uh, the roads were, were blocked. So, for instance, I mean, when entry, entry if it's not uh, functional properly, it's not fully open and so on, uh, the, the, the flow of traffic from all the provinces uh, on the northern side, the Gauteng, the Popo, Northwest, uh, Free State, and so all of those provinces in Pumalanga, all of those, besides the fact that they could also take the, the alternative route, but th they seem to converge on M3, and they, they, once it is closed, it means that whole traffic is actually closed. And once that happens, it means we are not in a position at all to be able to, to have any, any operations. So most people uh, ended up canceling. We also had a, 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 a one specific hotel that uh, unfortunately was also bent down uh, to get a capacity of about 70 uh, uh, beds. And so now when you've got something like that bent down, which was in a village, um, it's around Duaduna, it was in a village, um, it was in communal land. Um, and, and we have made emphasis about the need for investment to flow into those particular areas. So that, that, that is indeed a concern, of concern to us. Uh, and um, there, there is uh, no uh, appetite to continue with those operations from uh, the owners of that particular hotel. They would uh, want to just uh, cut their losses and move on. Um, so that's, that's, that's really an area uh, which which uh, was was a, a, a challenge. The, the 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 one other good thing which we saw was uh, the vaccines uh, came through, uh, starting with the different ages. This is outside the category of the healthcare workers, and that uh, we were we were quite happy about. Um, of course, we were also concerned when we started seeing some signs of. Uh, uh, anti vex and all of that uh, does not actually uh, augur well with uh, uh, the, 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 the strengthening of the, the country's uh, resolve to be able to demonstrate that we, we, we are all about the recovery of our sector. And this is why uh, there were interventions uh, to, to run campaigns to, 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 to really call upon uh, everyone to come on board and make sure that we make vaccination a success. Uh, during this period also, we got our norms and standards for safe operation of the sector approved. Now I need to emphasize here that these norms and standards would be sufficient for purposes of the tourism sector operating beyond the period of uh, the, the state of disaster as and when that comes. Um, and let us move to the next uh, slide. Thank you. We, we also saw during this period um, uh, what was termed the red listing. Um, and in most instances, one country starts and once that country has started, then everybody else then follows. Um, and, and highly stigmatized approach to uh, the management uh, of, of, of the virus and the management of the pandemic um, and, and the mitigation uh, of whatever risks that were deemed to be uh, from, from the different parts of the world. And this was a, a bigger challenge because it then begins to affect not only just the confidence, but it affected the actual movement um, from those countries, it affected uh, the airlines uh, who also uh, decided to, to, to join in and 
decided not to come and so on. So, so that, that was a bigger, bigger, bigger challenge. Uh, what we appreciated out of uh, the interventions, uh, one was that uh, we, we, we drew lessons here um, that a, a, a more diplomatic approach, um, engagements that um, are kind of like on a one-on-one one -on -one basis, uh, seemed to yield better results, seemed to yield better results. Honorable members would recall uh, the time when the minister was having engagements with the UK, uh, a, a, a high commission here, and uh, the subsequent events uh, that, that actually then took place. Um, and, and ultimately, um, uh, when, when new, 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 new uh, red list came, uh, continuous effort of, uh, you know, the South Africa uh, coordinated approach uh, actually led ultimately to us being able to, to, to get rid of some of these uh, challenges uh, ultimately. Uh, so those lessons we believe uh, it's important to carry them uh, forward and so on. Uh, and part of what we then did to make sure that uh, it's, it, we do this in a systematic way um, we, we, we then launched the Global Advocacy Campaign where, you know, the, the real uh, aspects of how South Africa is managing the pandemic, what is the real impact, uh, what is the state of affairs within the country in relation to the pandemic, that information being communicated also by experts and so on to be able to actually put context overall. That was then followed through, and it actually assisted quite a lot in terms of us being able to uh, continuously uh, reassure uh, the, 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 the various stakeholders, be it trade, uh, but also uh, the market itself directly um, uh, to, to, to make sure that ultimately uh, they have confidence uh, in coming back uh, to South Africa. So now we can see uh, the airlines are coming back. Uh, uh, and we can see that uh, the, the numbers are slowly, and we would probably see this when we come back for uh, the, the, the other two quarters. But there, there, is, there is some movement that we are starting to, to pick up, although uh, Omicron did uh, uh, really affect us quite a lot, even though it was not within these two quarters. The, these these, uh, these uh, line graphs, um, we are using them to just demonstrate the, 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 the relationship between um, the higher levels of the pandemic, higher levels of the risk adjusted strategy and the performance of the sector. So every time, if you look at May, for instance, uh, that's the time when there was an opening and then it then went down again, and that is food and beverage. So this would relate to uh, the time slots for operations, the number of people that could be in a particular place at a particular time, whether it's a restaurant, is this and so on. Um, and and some, some of those uh, just did not open because uh, they, 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 the overheads to, to, to maintain the operations whilst you, 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 you don't necessarily have uh, the complete uh, client base that you ordinarily would require for you to sustain your operations, let alone to actually reach uh, proper profitable margins and so on. So this was, uh, was, was, was an indication. The same, the same goes for accommodation. Um, you would see it, it, it then goes down as and when we have got uh, uh, a, a particular uh, mitigation strategy at a particular time, and it goes up when uh, that is lifted and so on. What, what these graphs tell us is that for us to be able to continue uh, sustainably, we, we need to move towards continuous operations, but those continuous operations must be done sustainably. And this is where the norms and standards come in. And the industry uh, has 
made a commitment that they are upholding these norms and standards and we believe that that would then take us forward. We were, uh, we received feedback uh, during this period. Uh, there was a huge emphasis from some markets. Germany is one of those as an example, uh, where they were saying they will trust an instrument that comes from government because then it is an instrument for everyone in the country. Not that they don't trust private sector, voluntary-based instruments, but the voluntary aspect of those instruments is what they were worried about, that they would not necessarily be able to give um, the, the necessary effect uh, because some would not necessarily be following those. Slide seven. Destination development, um, important to highlight here is the fact that um, there were sites that uh, could not be visited uh, if, if, if the department's headquarters is uh, in Pretoria and you have projects that are across the country in all the provinces. Uh, during a period when Houten is not able to move, you then are also not able to move, which means that you left to use technology to deal with uh, project meetings and so on, but it doesn't allow you or even enable you to be able to say, uh, to, can I then be able to inspect the site and see these and that and so on. So those are some of the issues that, that we're experiencing. We also are observing that uh, there is a bit of a, a, a wait and see game from investors. And this wait and see game from investors uh, is pretty much a global phenomenon. And it is linked to the fact that uh, the, there is still much greater uncertainty. Uh, we, we, we have seen that Omicron came it, 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 it was not as strong as the previous variants. Uh, we don't know whether the future variants are going to, we know, we are told that there, there will be future variants, but we do not know what we do not know and what the scientists are also saying they do not know is whether they are going to be uh, stronger than the previous or they are going to be uh, mutating towards uh, some form of a common flu. If that then happens, if the latter happens, then it would enable us to say going forward, 2022, that wait and see game of watching where things are going will continue for 2022, but we are likely to see 2023 returning and seeing some investments actually coming uh, into fruition. If that does not materialize, it means 2023 will also come in similar to 2022 as a year where there's still going to be this wait and see game. And we would then be anticipating that 2024 is the period that we will begin to start seeing where things would go. Eight. In the, the branch TSSS, uh, and this is the, the branch where uh, we, we had uh, the majority of the challenges, uh, which, which had uh, the impact uh, that, that, that manifests in the score that we got uh, for quarter one and for quarter two. And, and the, the various challenges, they vary. Um, these, 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 these challenges that... Um, are related to the inability of the industry to operate. How that affects this problem is that you would have, honorable chairperson, you would have youth that are recruited that are supposed to go into a classroom, but they cannot actually go into that bigger space into that, that environment because of the numbers. Um, 
you you would have instances where they are supposed to go for experiential learning. They are not able to actually go into that environment because the operations of that particular business have been suspended until there is greater certainty in terms of the operation. So uh, the department itself was also impacted uh, by some of these, uh, these, uh, these aspects directly. Um, the other aspect that uh, really was a, a, a much bigger challenge is the interdiction of our uh, program as it relates to tourism equity fund. Now I need to expand a little bit on this. The, the interdict says we should not disbase any money to the beneficiaries and we should not process any application. Prior to that interdict, the cumulative value of all the applications that were already through was over 5 billion. And honorable members would know this is nearly a 1.2 billion fund. We then have to look at this in three different ways. The first one is the fund, the interdict against the fund stands until the matter is heard. We don't know when the court is going to sit. It could be uh, in, in a month time, it could be in a year, it could be in two years. Now, that on its own then says, what then are we going to do? Do we sit and wait for this process throughout? Or do we also look at it and say, are there other things that can be done um, if we are to move forward uh, and, and make sure that we unlock this capital so that uh, the economy can actually benefit from it and we are able to recover uh, to, to ensure that these investments uh, that are linked directly, directly to transformation are able to, 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 to go through. To be able to do that, we are looking into what the core of the issues that are contested are. And of course, here I'm a little bit constrained this. I, I don't have the ability to, 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 to go into, uh, I will not be in a position to go into the, the details of the case because the case uh, is before the court. Now, the issue will be what is really being contested and whether that which is being contested, is there a way that we could actually find each other on such matters and be able to actually move forward? So that's one aspect. That's one aspect. The second, as the, the second aspect of it is that whether it is a decision of uh, the outcome of uh, the court case or it is through this process that I alluded to, ultimately there will have to be capital that will be used to, 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 to provide for that thing. So we then went on a process to say, um, let's get the state law advisors to get our senior counsel to be able to go through these interdicts and advise us as to whether are, are we in a position to capitalize the fund or we are not in a position to capitalize the fund. Mm -hmm. So they came back to us and they indicated that 
the capitalization of the fund is not interdicted. The disbasements to the beneficiaries, as well as going through the processing of the applications, that is what is interdicted. So they then said we are at liberty to then make sure that what has been appropriated for these purposes should then be uh, transferred over to CIFA so that when the decision, the final decision comes, it does not find an empty scheme and we are not able to actually roll out anything because the money has been uh, appropriated for the MTSF period and for the, for the MTEF period. Beyond the MTF period, we may not necessarily have more resources to deal with this. So we have now been in a position to ensure that it is uh, adequately capitalized. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm flagging that because it also relates to the issues around the expenditure and the expenditure that was not necessarily that were favorable uh, e, 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 to, the, to a large extent was actually due to this because the amount of money that has been budgeted from the department side for this year, for these particular purposes, is 180 million rand. So that at a program level is, is considerably uh, a large amount of money. Um, of course, on the positive side, uh, the, 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 those that have been uh, retrenched um, were are getting the opportunity to then become uh, upskilled and reskilled, and we're doing that uh, in collaboration with uh, the, the, the the industry. Uh, unfortunately, that too gets affected by the fact that uh, they had not fully returned uh, back into uh, proper operations as such. Um, from a corporate affairs point of view. One of the things that was the biggest challenge, which again affected program four, um, inability for the bid evaluation committees to, to meet. Now you would, you would uh, understand honorable members that when you've got bids that have got to be adjudicated upon, uh, I mean, to be evaluated, the, the, the evaluation of those bids, everyone must be in the same place. And when uh, one person or two are deemed to be a contact to someone who has got COVID, uh, then suddenly uh, those meetings can't take place. You've got to uh, find another alternative date when they've gone through the full observation and all those kinds of things. So those, those were some, some of the, the, the challenges. Um, and, and of course, um, where we could use technology, we did. Uh, uh, in some instances, including recruitment and so on, where we could use technology, but uh, when it comes to tenders, um, it's, it's not the most ideal approach to actually uh, use uh, just, just normal virtual technology uh, connection without uh, all the necessary, you, you need a system of your own and, and it requires considerable amount of resources to actually set up such a system. Um, which we do not have. So, so those were some of the things that actually uh, affect, affected us. The other um, areas that we were affected um, is, is the fact that, uh, you know, global logistics were totally, totally disrupted. Uh, things were at a standstill. Um, and, and you would order uh, computer equipment and so on. And in some instances, uh, suppliers would tell you, we are not even going to quote you because we, we don't even know when we are likely to get this because of the problems with shipment and all those kinds of things. The global logistics are kind of uh, in, a, in, a, in a totally disrupted uh, situation. So, so that too affected us. It also affected the, some of those areas that we're dealing with uh, uh, when it comes to, to, to the ages finding in terms of the replacement of certain outdated equipment and so on. Um, but, but, you know, you just have to wait because there's nothing that uh, one could do uh, in, in, that, in that regard. 
Of course, um, across government, there is implementation of ceiling on the compensation of employees. This has got a direct implication, a direct implication in terms of one, the vacancy rate, but also it does have a direct implication when it comes to 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 the uh, to the to the target on fifty percent women representation at SMS level. The reason for that is because without the money, you 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 can't recruit. Um, if if you go into that, then you're going to end up with over expenditure, and over expenditure becomes unauthorized expenditure and all those kinds of things. So you you try and make sure that you stick within the limits, but as you do that, uh, these uh, targets, these targets will then also be, 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 be negatively impacted upon. Before I actually go to the performance overview, I would want to also just, uh, I know if we'll come later, the FTCFO will come later uh, and speak to, to some of the, the details, but I want to speak to the issue of the irregular expenditure, uh, the 900 and something thousand. That irregular expenditure was not incurred during this financial. It is a disclosed expenditure in the previous financial year in terms of which bid is associated with and, and all those kinds of things. However, the bid was for a, a, a period more than a year. And it means uh, last year being the first year, uh, this year being the subsequent year, it would still be there and, and because the, the services are still being rendered. Uh, in brief, it is the matter that we reported on last week when we were dealing with the follow-up on AGSE's findings. This is the matter where we indicated that we have referred it to the office of uh, the chief procurement officer so that they can review uh, the entire process and give us an indication of was this an irregularity or not. The essence being that there was, um, what I'm informed, and I don't get involved in, in, the, in the detail of the, 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 the process of supply chain once I, sign of the specifications, the process then works out on its own. What, what the report was, was that there, were, there, were, there was a bidder who did not specify certain requirements related to the pricing that were part of the requirements. And that person was then uh, not awarded, and the one who was awarded was the one who came immediately after that. So that was a decision that was considered by the bid adjudication committee after they had gone through everything that has been submitted to them from the evaluation committee and so on. Now, the, the question that comes in is, uh, was it a correct decision? Was it not a correct decision? So we're saying we're a third party would probably be in a better position than to say what this is. In my own engagement with the AGSA, they have indicated that they are comfortable with that kind of approach. And then we will treat it for what it is immediately after we have received that particular feedback. Um, shall you then move on, Petra, to the overview? Thank you. Quarter one performance. Um, 83.3% for corporate management um, and uh, tourism research policy and international relations, 92.3%. Destination development was at 100%. And our challenges were with tourism sector support services and I've alluded to some, and I think the DDG will take us through some of the, the more details in that regard. Uh, leading to 71.64%. Quarter two, quarter two, thank you. Corporate management still at 83.3%. Um, 
uh, tourism research policy and uh, international relations 86.67% uh, and, and the DDG will give uh, an overview of those areas there we, uh, we had uh, some, 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 some challenges. Uh, and then the destination development, 88.89%. Uh, I think there was one area here. I don't want to, to take it from them. They will explain in detail. And then the tourism sector support services uh, was still at 42%. Uh, uh, and we were marginally uh, higher than the previous quarter, uh, marginally, very small margin. 72.13%. We are confident that uh, going forward, uh, we will see much greater improvement in the performance. And uh, also for the financial year, we should be uh, achieving some decent percentage uh, in that regard. I will stop here and I'm going to ask DDG Malan then to take the honorable members through program two. She will be followed by the Ratomatakala who is acting on behalf of DDG Chetia for program three, and then uh, uh, Ms. Twaba will then come through uh, for program four. After which then uh, the DDG corporate management, um, uh, Ms. Gwenya will then go through the, the corporate management one and uh, the acting CFO will then take the honorable members through the details of the financials and the explanatory notes around those financials. Thank you very much, honorable chairperson. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much, DG. Um, good morning, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. Good morning, uh, DM and, and colleagues. Um, uh, as DG indicated, I will take uh, you through Program 2's performance in Quarter 1 and 2, just to recall what he has just presented in, in um, Quarter 1. The program had one um, target out of the 13 that was not uh, fully achieved. It was, um, but significant work uh, was done. And then in quarter two, there's um, one uh, target out of 15 that wasn't uh, fully achieved, but significant work uh, was done. And then there's one target that was not achieved. Uh, I will speak to those when, when I get to those. In terms of our deliverables for, for quarter one and two, um, our first uh, indicator um, had eight uh, monitoring and evaluation reports that we need to um, uh, develop by, by the end of, of the financial year. And of course, in quarter one and two, we were preparing uh, some of the reports and finalizing others. So the first target there speaks to our state of tourism report that we do annually um, and publish annually. And we also start with the preparation for the next um, report in the, in the same year. Um, the two targets that we had for quarter one and two, or actually the three uh, targets were achieved um, as, as planned. Then for, no, sorry, Pietra, just the previous slide, thank you. Then we also um, publish a quarterly a tourism performance report, um, uh, which we publish on, on our website. It is, of course, um, impacted by the availability of, of data, but we do publish those, those reports quarterly, and we did therefore publish the two um, uh, reports that we were planning to publish. Next slide, please. Thanks, Petra. Uh, we then also um, started with preparations because we plan to monitor the implementation of the norms and standards for the safe operation of this, uh, in the sector. DG did mention in his opening remarks that the norms and standards were approved in the third quarter, but we started with, with the preparations of doing the monitoring of, of the rollout. And our two targets uh, for quarter one and two were, were achieved as, as, as planned. We also uh, uh, plan to do two reports on the impact of, of COVID on the tourism sector. Um, and uh, for the two quarters, we had uh, four targets uh, uh, in the development of, of those reports and the um, uh, publication thereof, and those four were, were achieved. Next slide, please. 
Um, then um, DG spoke to the tourism sector recovery plan. Um, we do, um, we started to uh, develop uh, quarterly implementation reports for the tourism sector recovery plan in the second quarter of the financial year. The, uh, the recovery plan was approved by cabinet in April and in the second quarter we started with our implementation report and that report was, was uh, published or was developed. Then we also do an annual national tourism sector strategy as honorable members will um, remember, we also have the NTSS, the national tourism sector strategy that um, we are rolling out together with the recovery plan and the targets, the two targets that we had for, for that um, uh, report uh, were achieved in, in the two quarters. Next slide, please. Um, then our, our next um, uh, output indicator speaks to the, uh, the review of the tourism policy, uh, uh, the green paper that we need to develop by the end of, of the financial year. Honorable uh, members will recall that uh, uh, advisory panel was established um, to, to, to lead this process. Unfortunately, this is uh, one of the targets or this is the uh, project which um, uh, the targets were not fully met in, in the quarters and under review. And it was mostly uh, because of, firstly, um, honorable members will um, realize that um, a policy is a, 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 man, a, a mandate of, of our executive authority. Uh, the ex executive authority changed and it's very important for us to work very closely with, with the minister and the deputy minister in the finalization of, of the review or at this point the, the close working um, relationship between the advisory panel and, and the executive. So in the, in the first quarter uh, we had to bring a minister on board in terms of or the, the panel had to bring, the advisory panel had to bring minister on board in terms of where they are and um, further stakeholder consultation um, had, to be, had to be done. So where we are at the moment, um, honorable members, is that by the end of, of quarter two, the draft document uh, was not finalized um, uh, and that then impacted on, on uh, getting um, sign off by, by minister. Um, for, for public comments, because that is our next step, is to publish uh, uh, the draft for, for public comment. Um, and at the, by the end of, of quarter two, uh, the draft document wasn't finalized um, due to uh, further stakeholder consultation and, and the reasons that I mentioned. Where we are at the moment is that the document had un undergone uh, further editing and, and um, we, we are uh, confident that the document uh, will be published for public comment within the next month or, or so. And we are confident that we will uh, catch up on, on, um, on that uh, target. Um, the next slide, please. Um, then uh, honorable members will recall that we are also um, at the moment as, as, a, as a program doing oversight of our public entity and we do provide quarterly reports on the governance and performance of the tourism sector to our executive authority um, and th those reports were, were developed. Um, then in terms of our um, systems, uh, we are uh, finalizing an integrated tourism knowledge uh, system, or we are implementing that. And there were three targets um, um, assigned uh, to that uh, annual target in the quarters under review, and both those were, were um, achieved. Then in terms of the data collection and verification in line with the NTMS regulations, those targets were achieved, although as DG indicated, um, the collection of data, for example, has been impacted by the, by the different um, waves, but we did um, continue with, with, with the data collection and we are continually um, 
um, doing uh, uh, the rollout uh, of the data collection and the verification thereof, but the targets were achieved. In terms of our uh, multilateral um, uh, fora that we have prioritized for, for the current financial year to advance mm -hmm. South Africa's um, tourism interest at a regional, global, con and continental level, we have identified six. Um, and during the period under review, we have targeted and um, uh, three um, of these uh, multilateral fora. And the reason behind it is because of their calendars of, of meetings and um, events. So it, it's not to say that we don't participate in, in these uh, fora during, uh, throughout the year when events happen and, and meetings do take place, we do participate in, in those. But uh, we have targeted the G20 um, uh, in, in quarter one and SADC and BRICS in quarter two, uh, as I said, because of their calendar of events and um, uh, those uh, targets were, were achieved. Next slide, please. Then in terms of um, uh, this target, which speaks to outreach programs to the, the diplomatic community. This in essence uh, um, is uh, related to what DG also mentioned in terms of reaching out um, to our diplomatic uh, community, uh, especially um, uh, related to the uh, COVID pandemic um, programs that we roll out as well uh, and, and restrictions uh, that is uh, placed by specific countries to, um, uh, for, uh, uh, on South Africa to discuss these amongst others. We have planned to have a, 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 a outreach um, in, in, um, in the second quarter. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, we, we struggle to uh, confirm uh, dates um, uh, in the second quarter. Um, but um, just to uh, update um, the honorable members that we did catch up in quarter three and when we come back to report on quarter three, we will indicate that we uh, uh, subsequently uh, did um, host that meeting that we planned for quarter two um, in, in quarter three. So uh, we did catch up on, on that. Next slide, please. Thank you very much, honorable members. That then brings uh, us to the end of program two. So in summary, just the um, target on, on the policy review and the one on the outreach program where we did catch up at in quarter three. Thank you very much. I'm handing over to Laratu standing in for, for DG Chetia. Okay. Um... Good morning, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. Good morning, Deputy Minister. I will be presenting Program 3, Destination Development. And in terms of the summary, we had 10 targets for quarter one, and all were achieved. And we had uh, nine targets for quarter two. One was not uh, fully achieved, and I will speak to it when I get there. And just going through the targets individually and what has been achieved, we have uh, an annual target of five destination planning and investment coordination initi initiatives. And the first one is the pilot, uh, pilot the budget resort network and brand concept. And in terms of that one, we had two targets for quarter one and those were achieved. The first one was the identification of tourism properties for the pilot, and then developing the framework for infrastructure audit. Those two were achieved. And for quarter two, still on the budget resort network and brand concept, we were meant to do an assessment, uh, infrastructure assessment for identified tourism properties, we have done that in quarter two and the target was achieved. The second uh, target under destination planning and investment coordination is around incorporating 
the prioritized initiatives from the tourism spatial master plans into the one plans for the district development model. And we are supporting five districts, uh, namely the OR Tambo district. The previous slide, please. The previous slide, please. The OR Tambo district, the Etequini Metro, Prixlikaseme district, and Namapa district. For quarter one, uh, our work involved assessment and consolidation of the prioritized initiatives that came from the tourism spatial master plans and that work was done. And the quarter two, the focus was on the tourism implementation plan review and incorporating the special master planning initiatives. The next slide, please. Number, the, the third uh, annual target still under destination planning and investment coordination is the development of a pipeline of nationally prioritized tourism investment opportunities focusing on the greenfield uh, projects. The greenfield projects are the new development like a new hotel. And uh, we have done the quarterly report on this area of work. And we have supported about six of these initiatives and for and the work that we are doing involves identifying and facilitating uh, discussions with the potential investors and equity partners facilitating discussions with the development funding institutions and linking this uh, the, the, these initiatives with the potential investors and also unblocking the infrastructure and regulatory barriers and for the fourth target, a database of distressed high impact tourism projects focusing on the brownfield projects. The brownfield projects are the existing uh, in, uh, products, in existing projects, existing initiatives that requires intervention. And also the same support is provided to look for potential and uh, credible investors. And we have done that and supported about six as well of these initiatives. And we are comfortable that the target, the annual target will be achieved. The fifth one is for the annual target is uh, the investment uh, promotion platforms being facilitated and four of those. And the quarter one and quarter two work largely focused on the, the preparatory work and one uh, investment promotion platform was facilitated and uh, in quarter three, which we are currently in, we, uh, we have done, I think about three and we are comfortable that the annual target will be achieved. The next slide, please. Okay, we also have uh, a target on destination enhancement initiatives and supporting those uh, initiatives. And the first one under there is uh, its infrastructure maintenance program implemented in 19 national parks and those are listed. And the work uh, has started in all the parks and we have developed, uh, we, ha we, have we are providing monitoring uh, support to this uh, initiative and also preparing a report at the end of each quarter and the quarterly target for both quarter one and quarter two were achieved. The next slide, please. And the second one under destination enhancement initiatives is the infra infrastructure maintenance program implemented in one state owned uh, asset and covering all the provinces and uh, our work again involves supporting and monitoring the work that is being carried out and the quarter one and quarter two targets were achieved for this one and the third one covers the the next slide please i think you skipped the yes the third one covers the support to, to the community-based uh, tourism projects. It's the work that uh, we are implementing 
in partnership with the Development Bank of South Africa, and those uh, projects are also listed there. And uh, we are providing uh, monitoring support and also any other support that is required. And largely in quarter one and quarter two, the work that has been done so far was in the appointment of professional service providers for those projects and also the starting with the inception reports. And we are comfortable that the construction phase will commence in 2022 in the next uh, financial year. And the target will be achieved. Thank you. And the last uh, target under destination development plan, it's the work opportunities created through the expanded public works program. And the target for quarter one was 574 work opportunities and 1,997 work opportunities were created and the target was achieved. And this is largely because when we started the financial year, we had projects that had concluded the procurement processes and had appointed service providers and were therefore able to start at the beginning of the financial year. So we were able, and they were able to enroll the participants in the various uh, EPWP projects and we were able to achieve the target. For quarter two, however, the target was 956 work opportunities. For quarter two, the target was 1,530 and 956 work opportunities were created and the target was not achieved. In this quarter, we are reporting only on the new participants that joined the program in quarter two. And uh, because we had already enrolled a lot of these participants in quarter one, and we, we were then not able to achieve the quarter two targets, However, we've just been looking at the quarter three targets and the achievements, and we are comfortable that the annual target will be achieved. And I think that concludes the destination development branch. Thank you. I will now hand over to program four. Morning. Uh... Chairperson, Honorable Chairperson, and good morning, uh, Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee. Uh, good morning, Deputy Minister, DG, and all colleagues on the call. Uh, I'm presenting a, a program for which is a tourism sector support services. If you go to the next slide, uh, in terms of our uh, uh, targets to uh, uh, implement incentive programs. We had targeted the adjudication meetings that were to be held um, uh, with regards to the TEF to be able to uh, take decisions and award um, uh, so that we can be able to implement the, 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 the TEF. Uh, unfortunately, the TEF um, uh, in quarter one and quarter two uh, is still under the uh, court um, uh, uh, interdict and the interdict specifically talks to um, a, a decisions, a, a, a interdict the implementation of the TEF. In terms of the Green Tourism Incentive Program, we have done well. Um, uh, one adjudication meeting uh, to decide on applications um, uh, was held in the, in the first quarter. In the second quarter, we were able um, to hold more than the target uh, 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 which is one, but we are able to um, uh, 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 hold two adjudication um, uh, 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 meetings. And that is due to the processes that we had undertaken to um, uh, review the, the, the processes towards um, uh, implementation of the, of the incentive program. When we look at the number of programs implemented to stimulate domestic tourism, we had planned for the um, implementation of the domestic tourism scheme. And in quarter one, we were to appoint a service provider to uh, implement the, 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 the domestic scheme. And, and in, in quarter one, we were not able to appoint a, a service provider 
Uh, however, there was an attempt to be able to draft the, the terms of, uh, of a reference and also a concept, a, a, a document was, um, uh, was developed. Uh, when we get to um, uh, quarter two upon discussion and presentation of the uh, concept uh, 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 document, there were some gaps that we, we in discussion with, 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 with colleagues and, and, and in the department, we were able to identify some gaps in terms of the concept document that we had uh, prepared. Uh, we were sent back to be able to uh, uh, close those, um, those, those, those gaps uh, uh, in the in the concept uh, uh, document that really took some time for us to be able to work on a new uh, a concept. But I must uh, show uh, members that some other aspects of the domestic tourism scheme are currently being implemented. In particular, uh, the domestic tourism campaigns that are meant to stimulate the culture of travel within provinces are being implemented in quarter three, we implemented in the Northern Cape and Houghton. Quarter four, we have already making means to be able to um, uh, uh, take these campaigns to Limpopo in the Western Cape and in partnership with, um, uh, with Robin, Robin, Robin Island. In the next slide, um, in terms of the uh, incubation programs that are meant to increase participation of SMEs in the tourism sector so that they can be inclusive uh, at growth. We have targeted incubation programs. And in, the, in, in, in quarter one, uh, we have already three um, uh, incubation programs, uh, Manieleti, Palaburua, and Mir that were uh, uh, under implementation. Uh, we um, uh, started um, uh, 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 with the implementation of the technology innovation incubator that we are doing with the technology innovation uh, uh, agency as at uh, quarter one we had already um, recruited uh, beneficiaries uh, we had already um, uh, started with a, a, a implementation unfortunately we were not able to get the targeted number we were looking for about 20 beneficiaries and despite our going all out to be able to to recruit the youth to participate um, in sharing their technological ideas in terms of how they can um, a, 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 a increase participation of SMEs. We had 13 as at a quarter, quarter one. In terms of the tour operators, uh, we had done some work in terms of uh, beneficiaries being selected as well. Uh, diagnostic evaluation and individual growth paths were developed for the uh, uh, tour operators that had been selected. The food services incubator that we are doing with uh, ACEDA, uh, we had already sent them a recruitment database. We are targeting um, uh, our former beneficiaries, especially uh, the chefs, those beneficiaries that had gone through our skills development um, a, a, a program. Uh, we are targeting them to uh, increase their a, a capability to turn into entrepreneurs where they can be able to uh, have their own uh, a, 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 a businesses. But we see a shift there in terms of a quarter two performance where uh, uh, the three um, uh, 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 incubators continued to be, um, the, the three ones that is Manieleti, Palabra Mir continued to be uh, implemented, but then um, a full implementation in terms of the tech incubator, uh, the tour operator incubator, including the uh, food and uh, services incubator. The lagging behind was only in the two community-based enterprises incubation uh, 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 program. And this one we had added in the, in the, in the financial year uh, under review, because in the outer years, part of our targets is to keep increasing on the number of incubation a, a, a programs that we are to offer to increase participation of SMEs in the, in, in the sector. Um, what we had done um, under quarter one, we had not yet appointed um, a service provider for the two uh, service providers for the two community-based enterprise incubation programs, but under uh, quarter two, uh, some work has already begun in terms of um, uh, 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 the planning. 
uh, what we did is that we have chosen and um, we are partnering with destination um, uh, development in terms of uh, picking up projects that they have um, uh, uh, funded and implemented in terms of the infrastructure development uh, program. We are also looking at those programs um, uh, that we had already done feasibility uh, studies uh, with regards to our uh, responsible uh, uh, tourism um, uh, 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 unit. Um, we had um, under quarter uh, uh, two, we had done site, site visits uh, just to check in terms of are these businesses still um, uh, operating? Uh, what is their state of uh, uh, readiness? We had also uh, concluded in terms of uh, developing a selection uh, criteria in terms of what businesses, uh, what, what criteria must this um, uh, enterprises or community based project. Um, uh, 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 fulfill for them to be selected for, for incubation. Mm -hmm. So the planning phase really took um, uh, quite some time and where we are uh, 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 currently is that um, the BSC has already said we have received approval in terms of the concept uh, for implementation of the incubation uh, 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 program. BSC has said but when the terms of reference came through, um, uh, uh, the BSC had to sit again to see if there is a possibility um, uh, for us to be able to consolidate the, 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 the projects and appoint a single uh, a service provider to be able to incubate um, uh, 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 this, this, this project. So we're expecting that um, uh, uh, very soon we will have and uh, uh, BSC or specifications that will enable us to be able to appoint a single service provider who will take care of all of the um, uh, selected uh, 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 projects. When we go to the um, uh, the, 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 the areas around uh, increasing participation of women in the tourism sector, first of all, we had uh, the uh, implementation of um, the Women in Tourism Business Development and Support Program. We are targeting 225 women um, uh, uh, across the, the, the country, uh, broken down into 25 women per, 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 per province. We were looking at the implementation um, uh, uh, in, in quarter two, but quarter one, we were looking to uh, appoint a service provider, which unfortunately, has not been done. We were looking at um, a, a, a launching the, the program uh, as well. Uh, that didn't take place um, a, 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 in, in, in quarter one. But what do we have um, a done in, in, in quarter two? We, 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 we have um, uh, set the, the, the processes in motion in terms of making sure that uh, the procurement process um, uh, 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 is, is, is happening. And as at the close of the second uh, quarter, um, uh, we were ready to uh, evaluate, um, but we received quite a huge response in terms of the number of bids uh, that we were to sit down and, 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 and evaluate. And um, um, uh, in terms of the evaluation uh, uh, process members, we are attending physically to the evaluation. So this is not a task that could have been done uh, working uh, remotely because it has got quite a huge amount of documentation that the members of the evaluation committee must go through. And my experience is that at certain intervals, some of the colleagues who have been appointed to sit on the evaluation committee were not able to, to come um, uh, uh, over and above the many documentation that we had received. They were not able to come because um, they had to quarantine and some of them were, 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 were sick. But fortunately, we have been able to conclude. And I must say, um, early this year in January, we received an appointment of a service provider. We are currently in the recruitment stage um, and uh, uh, surely we will be able to, to, to implement it in quarter three because the in quarter four, because the recruitment is not going to be long. We are sourcing, we are recruiting from 
the women that are already uh, within our uh, women in tourism uh, 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 database uh, across the, the, the provinces. The, um, the, 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 the UNWTO Women in Tourism Pilot uh, uh, program that we are uh, running in, in, in Limpopo for the first quarter, we were to appoint a service provider, and in the second quarter, we were to launch the, the program. That didn't happen in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the first quarter. Part of the reason um, uh, members were said, um, um, the this, 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 this study that we had embarked on, we had appointed a service provider to, 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 to do a study in terms of the barriers um, uh, in the uh, uh, Mopani and Bembe district as pilot programs. Um, uh, 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 the study was to tell us what are the barriers uh, that women are faced with in terms of entering into the, um, the, 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 the tourism uh, 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 space. And the, 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 the study was a little bit um, a, a, a delayed, but when it came, it really had good proposals in terms of the measures or interventions that we can take to be able to, 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 to increase participation of, 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 of women. Um, uh, just as we were um, uh, 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 unrolling the, 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 the study, uh, the, the report, uh, uh, scrutinizing it, then we realized that we may not need a service provider to offer all of the interventions. Because part of what they were saying to us is that there must be capacity building workshops that are held with, um, with the, 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 the women. Uh, 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 in this in, 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 in sector, we need to embark on skills training uh, 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 to capacitate uh, 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 women, especially uh, young women in this two um, uh, uh, district. We were very comfortable because some of the initiatives that were uh, proposed or suggested in the in, in the study are programs that we are running in the in, 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 in the department. So we have signed through an implementation plan uh, 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 currently. Uh, we are embarking on some of the initiatives internally without sourcing a service uh, uh, provider. I know colleagues are making preparations uh, to go to uh, Mopani and Bembe district to take our capacity, uh, uh, to take a capacity building workshop uh, there. So we will be able to launch once we have started um, unrolling those interventions. The only um, a, a procurement that we can done, we can we can do is not on a big scale in terms of a bid um, and opening up uh, the process for for a bid. We will do a request for quotation in terms of the business uh, development support for the for the women. Uh, we are quite comfortable, um, uh, uh, Chairperson, Honourable Chairperson, that um, uh, quarter four um, we will be having a lot to report on in terms of. Um, uh, the, the, the plans that we are putting in place to, 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 to catch up. I must say also that this is an 18 month um, a, 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 a project. So we, we will start with it in NSM in quarter four since the approval has been made. In terms of the implementation of the service excellence program, we have done well. Chairperson, I will not speak of it. I will quickly jump to the uh, the, the, the program regarding um, the, the tourism uh, 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 monitors. Um, uh, in the first quarter, we were able to um, uh, meet the target due to the submission of quarterly reports, which were mainly about the planning phase for the nine provinces, including Sandy, Sun Parks, and Isimanagis. But come quarter two, um, uh, there, were, there were reports, but um, as we had hoped that in, implementation would have started in earnest. It did not start. Uh, it, it was only in Sandy and at some parts where um, there was implementation where tourism monitors were really on the on, 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 on the ground. Uh, the reasons for uh, the variance there is that um, the, the planning um, uh, took some time in terms of uh, uh, um, uh, 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 the, firstly the negotiations of contracts and I will I will come to that point uh, later on, because it will also touch on the other skills development uh, 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 program uh, uh, processes. But in this in this regard, once we were able to finalize on the on the contract, uh, 
different providers, service providers that have been appointed being scattered um, across the country. And it was the time for the unrest when we, we were expecting the, the contracts to, 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 to come back. There was a little bit of a delay there in terms of the service providers um, uh, 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 availing the, the, the signed contract to us to be able to develop a business plan and also to be able to keep steady with the, with the implementation of the, of, of, of the pro project. Um, as at uh, quarter two, um, uh, uh, honorable members, uh, all contracts have been signed. Um, uh, we, are, we, we had finalized um, the, the, the outstanding procurement processes, which was Mpumalanga uh, and Mpumalanga. Let me say Mpumalanga, we have been able to receive a, an appointment and it is currently under implementation. Uh, Sandy, this is the phase two that we are talking about. Um, uh, 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 the terms of reference have been uh, uh, sent out uh, for, for phase two implementation. Monitors are still out um, uh, at, at Sandy, uh, but for phase two, we are embarking on a new pro uh, uh, process uh, to appoint a, 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 a service provider. Um, Pumalanga, I have alluded that it is um, uh, currently under implementation. Limpopo is still behind, but um, we are expecting to have a decision in terms of the appointment um, uh, 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 very soon if it has not been done recently in, in, in this week. We are doing well in terms of capacitating tourist guides, and they are entering into the second phase of the Mandarin um, uh, 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 training. Uh, and we have started with the procurement for 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 for, for the for the for, for the training to to, to to start for the um, a, a, a coming financial year. Um, uh, just to preface, um, a, 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 a honourable chairperson, regarding um, a, some of the, the 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 situation that we found ourselves in when it comes to skills uh, 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 capacity building programs. DG and Deputy Minister have already um, uh, alluded to, to, uh, to them, but on the ground, um, uh, Chairperson, we took a uh, uh, planning and um, uh, very serious in terms of uh, how to, uh, uh, to promote accountability and to strengthen uh, project management um, uh, in the Department of this um, uh, 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 skills um, uh, uh, building, skills uh, 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 program. First of all, um, just to put a light, we, we operate in terms of milestone. The first milestone, we call it the planning phase, where after we have um, appointed a service provider, we sit down with the service provider to get to negotiate um, a, a, how the planning must, must, must proceed. We then sign a, a service level agreement. They go out, uh, they um, recruit, and uh, this is the second, the second um, a, 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 a milestone. They, they recruit and they induct the learners. Uh, part of the planning is to go out and meet with potential uh, employers who will make um, their, 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 their facilities or, or their work, work, workplaces uh, uh, available for the learners to do their, 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 their experiential uh, 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 learning. They also go out and source out a uh, venues, training, training venues uh, for the classroom learning to, to be able to, to happen. That process takes quite a little bit of uh, a time for it to be uh, concluded. We also expect that the employers, potential employers, will then commit and give us commitment letters that they will make um, they, 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 will, they will make their facilities open for. For, 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 for beneficiaries or for the learners. But in this year, uh, 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 under review, uh, just as we had concluded uh, in some other uh, programs, um, uh, as we entered the, this, this financial year, um, the processes were at various stages. Some we had uh, been able to conclude on the procurement uh, processes and there were appointments made. Some were still under procurement. Some we were not able to get um, a, 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 a favorable decision in terms of the procurement uh, phase. But there was another uh, um, um, uh, um, um, uh, intervention that we had made as a department just to ensure that we promote um, uh, accountability and a proper usage of um, uh, 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 
state, state funds, we had introduced an aspect where we were no longer making advance payment, especially when it comes to, to stipends. That really introduced a some thorny point in terms of service providers who were not that well versed with this new um, a, a, a initiative and dragged the, 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 the negotiations. You see when I'm, I'm presenting uh, on specific a, a, a programs, it, it really dragged, they, 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 because they, they used to um, them receiving a bulk of the money regarding stipends at, 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 at at a time, and we were able to say, no, we, we will pay stipends as and when and you, you provide um, a, a, a report, especially um, a, 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 a one, one stipend, two, at the most two stipends, so that we are not um, a, 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 a running the risk of um, not processing them on time. Uh, but currently, this is what we are doing. We are paying only one or two stipends um, a, 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 at a time. Um, the the, the um, level four um, uh, uh, also impacted on uh, implementation of uh, certain milestones because um, uh, though they were planned, uh, I remember in Western Cape though they have done recruitment and, 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 and they had planned for induction. Induction couldn't happen because this is a face-to-face -face and a, a classroom a based approach. They were not able to do a, a recruitment because of the uh, uh, restrictions that we were we were we were, we were put uh, uh, under. Um, in 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 quarter one, uh, Jefferson, if I were to go back to the uh, presentation on the uh, food safety quality assurance uh, uh, program, Western Cape, and um, uh, the point that I had made that um, the only outstanding uh, deliverable was the orientation, which was. Uh, which had to be suspended due to the adjusted alert level four. Uh, how then we were able to recruit and select, but this was partially done. Um, uh, uh, just to say, we, we if we, we talk about how then we've got certain uh, districts spread across a uh, 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 thing. It's just not in one one area uh, uh, of how thing. So some some areas there was recruitment and selection of learners. Uh, in others, it was outstanding. The KZN uh, procurement process uh, was finalized. However, there was no suitable uh, service provider appointed um, among all the bids that we had um, we had uh, we had received. But in quarter two, uh, um, a Western Cape was fully on board in terms of implementation. Uh, How then has had had then completed the recruitment and selection, uh, had done the induction of learners only in Swami and, and Sibibeng, had concluded the signing of the uh, service level agreement and the, um, the signing of the business plan uh, was underway. Part of what had um, disturbed the conclusion of the business plan was that um, with the um, alert level four, uh, there was uh, ideas thrown around in terms of Will we, can we not consider um, a, 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 a offering this training virtual um, a, instead of a, a, a classroom? That really took some time for us to be able to negotiate with the, with the service providers, go out and check what is doable, what is not uh, doable. But finally, the decision was that um, uh, we, we will not be doing a, a virtual. If we need to um, a go to classrooms, we will try and, and go to, to, to classroom, uh, given the risks associated with um, the, the purchasing of uh, laptops for so many beneficiaries, how we are going to, um, the ownership therefore, and ensuring that they, 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 they are safe. We took a decision that we will do um, a classroom uh, a training. We had started at quarter two with the processes to be able to um, uh, appoint a service provider uh, for KZN, and the closing uh, date was the 11th uh, of, of, of October. I'm talking to the, and as, as slide number 45, talking to the reasons for the city of Jobek and uh, 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 why we were not able to do the, the, the induction. And uh, that was the discussions that we were having with the service provider regarding the method of, of, of training. Uh, but ultimately, we were able to conclude on the service level agreement and the business plan. Thank you. We can move to slide 46 now. 
This relates to the chef professional cookery uh, with training on non standards for um, uh, safe tourism or operations. And um, uh, uh, in terms of quarter one, we were looking at having to conclude the recruitment, the selection and uh, induction of, 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 of learners. In the Northern Cape, um, the recruitment selection of learners was, uh, was undertaken. And uh, in first state, uh, recruitment um, and selection were partially uh, uh, done uh, due to negotiations of the service level agreement and the business plan, which um, uh, negotiations had to, 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 to take place. And uh, in Northwest, the recruitment process was finalized. However, the service provider was not um, uh, appointed. Uh, quarter two, uh, first state had concluded in terms of the recruitment and selection. Uh, recruitment could not um, uh, uh, commence uh, uh, because of negotiations that we had to uh, conclude with the, with the, the service provider. And uh, we were able to conclude very late to allow for implementation or induction to, 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 to take place. Um, uh, as I've said, uh, Northwest, we were not able to, 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 to appoint. Um, in terms of the correction, corrective uh, uh, measures and the reasons for variance, we are saying um, uh, the, 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 in first state, the, the, the negotiations um, uh, were really about um, whether we are going e-learning or we are going to, to the classroom. That has got an impact in terms of the, 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 the available budget, the method of, 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 of training. Um, in, in Northwest, the reasons why there was no um, uh, appointment of a service provider was that during the process, um, a, a DBEC commissioned an investigation on a, 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 a conflict of, 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 of interest um, a, a, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the process. Uh, ultimately, uh, uh, while the investigation um, uh, was, 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 was pending, the bid lapsed, and uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are currently looking at a, a, a new process in terms of appointing a service provider. Um, I, I, um, I'm going to the wine service training, the, the Somalias uh, 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 project. Um, uh, in quarter one, um, in KZN and, and, and Western Cape, we had achieved partial um, uh, 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 achievement of our deliverables in that uh, we had planned for recruitment and selection, which was uh, partially done. Um, uh, uh, negotiations in terms of the service level agreement and business plan um, uh, we, 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 we were continuing. Uh, but in quarter two, in KZN and Western Cape, we had recruited, we had selected beneficiaries. However, implementation could not commence. We were still looking at the best method in terms of bringing inductions. Whether e learning or, 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 or physical. In terms of the corrective uh, uh, measures, we have been able to uh, complete the orientation for all learners in, in, in the provinces as at quarter two. The hospitality youth program on um, slide number 49. This is where we are targeting all nine provinces. And what we do in terms of the procurement processes, we cluster the, the, the provinces. And uh, cluster one, which is in Pimalang, Alimpopo, and, and, and Northwest, uh, procurement process was finalized. However, uh, no bid no bid was appointed by, 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 by the system. And uh, quarter two as well, uh, cluster two, sorry, cluster two as well, we had and uh, completed on the procurement process, but uh, no bidder was appointed. But in quarter three, we were fortunate we had a, an appointment um, a, 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 a where um, a, a decision was taken and, and a bidder was uh, appointed. So in quarter three, um, uh, members, you will see that we were able to, for, 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 for cluster three uh, in, in, in the, Eastern Cape, Northern Cape, and Western Cape, we were able to um, uh, uh, proceed with the recruitment and selection, and also the signing of the business plan and service level agreement. But in quarter, in, in just one and two, 
we were not able to um, uh, 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 implement the measures of recruiting and, and, and selection within the fit program. Uh, the reasons why we were not um, able to um, uh, finalize the recruitment and selection for those uh, for the cluster that we, we had, and, uh, uh, and part of the commitment that I have said was that we we are we are including um, uh, retrenched um, uh, uh, youth, so um, to meet that target of. Um, uh, uh, covering, which we have not been doing, uh, we have not done in the past, but because of the tourism recovery plan, we were looking at youth who have been retrenched. And uh, we negotiated with employers, through our service providers, with employers in the tourism space for, for them to be able to um, share with us the youth that they had retrenched and uh, make some commitment in terms of them taking these employees back and, and, and allowing them to go for, 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 for upskilling while we are, we are uh, really um, uh, making sure that um, we alleviate uh, poverty on their, on their side. Um, we, 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 as at quarter uh, 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 two, we were looking to start a new procurement process for those um, two clusters where we were not able to, 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 to get an appointment. Um, orientation for Qatar 3 has, has since uh, been concluded. We are doing well in terms of the 20 women enrolled in the executive development um, a, 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 a program. Uh, um, uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the, the recognition of prior learning process for the qualification of, 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 of chefs, um, we are targeted a procurement of a service provider for, 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 for quarter one, recruitment selection and induction of learners uh, for quarter two, we were able to, 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 to meet the appointment of a, a service provider. However, no, no, to start with the procurement process so that we can enter into the, the, the targets of recruitment and, 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 and selection. Uh, after concluding the recruitment process, uh, unfortunately, the, 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 the bidder who had scored in terms of functionality upon investigation when we checked the credentials regarding uh, triple BEE, they were not able to meet um, uh, the, 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 the targets that we have set for, 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 for appointment, and we had to restart the, 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 the process. Um, that has since been, since been done, um, and currently, and um, where we are with the process is that we are we have concluded on the on the on the learning aspect and, and the, the chefs are now going through their their assessment so that they can be uh, certificated with the necessary qualifications. This is a project that has really um, a, 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 had received focus attention and it is now um, at, at conclusion. Uh, in terms of capacity building programs, and um, uh, uh, 225 SMEs trained on the norms and standards at, uh, as at um, uh, quarter one, uh, the, 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 the process necessitated that we get into contact with the stakeholders so that we can have uh, engagement. And we were uh, right on target in terms of uh, a build pulling through uh, some of our stakeholders so that we can be able to identify um, a, 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 this um, a, a SMMEs for training and also be able to um, a, a get to understand the areas that we can be able to target uh, in terms of um, a, 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 the, the training. Uh, we are targeting um, a 25 per province and uh, villages, townships and small small towns. Uh, you will see the, the, the nature of the, not the nature, but the organizations that we were uh, consulting with so that we, our training is, 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 is very relevant and also targets, targets the, 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 the right um, uh, SMMEs. Uh, quarter one, we received approval for uh, the, 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 the concept. And uh, in quarter two, we were able to start with the implementation of the of the of, 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 of the 
to the project. The National Tourism Career Expo is going very well. Uh, we had a slight um, uh, 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 um, regression there in terms of the approval of the project plan on the hosting uh, by, 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 by provinces, which is a, a, a process that is led by the host and a, a, a province. Uh, but we have since been able to receive approval of the project plan and it is under uh, implementation. We will be able to um, host and um, uh, before um, uh, uh, the, the NTS, NTCE before the end of the financial year. Actually, they have, there are dates that the host employer, the host uh, province had suggested to, 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 to us. The implementation of the educators uh, development program is going uh, very well uh, in terms of the, um, uh, 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 the, 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 the provinces that um, have been targeted. In the first quarter, we did the uh, needs analysis. Um, in the second quarter, we were able to implement in four um, uh, 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 provinces. Northwest um, uh, will be done in, 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 in quarter four, but the other uh, provinces have been done and we have produced a report in terms of the development of the um, 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 uh, uh, initiative. Uh, members, I suspect, yes, this is my last slide. Thank you very much. Um, good morning. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Honorable DM, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, DG and colleagues. I will then move um, straight to um, the indicators given that DG has already provided the summary. Um, indicator number one was on the um, audit outcome. Um, the annual target was an unqualified audit on financial um, statements and performance information, quarter one. The target was to submit financial and non-financial uh, performance information to both the AGSA and National Treasury, uh, and that was done. We did not have a target for quarter two. Next slide, uh, Petra. Indicator two was on the vacancy rate. Um, the annual target is not to exceed the 10% um, vacancy rate on the funded establishment. Um, quarter one, the vacancy rate was at 11.5. Um, quarter two, the vacancy rate increased to 12.5. Um, and this is despite the fact that there was progress in the filling of positions uh, and a number of posts were actually filled but changes in the composition of the executive resulted in changes in the offices of ministry. And at the end of September, support staff of the former minister, their contracts expired, and we could only conclude contracts for our current minister in the third quarter. Um, thank you, Petra. The third indicator was on percentage compliance with equity targets. Uh, in terms of the Departmental Employment Equity Plan. Uh, the first target was to maintain 50% women representation at SMS level. Um, quarter one, um, SMS uh, representation was at 44.1. Progress was registered in the second quarter where a number of female SMS positions were filled and we were able to achieve the 50% women representation. The second target related to maintaining a minimum of 3% uh, representation for people living with disability. Um, quarter one, we achieved 4.3%. Quarter two, we increased to 4.1%. And amongst the reason is the appointment of an SMS member with disability. The third target related to maintaining a 91.5% Black representation. That target was achieved in the first quarter. We were able to register 96.1% uh, both in the first and in the second quarter, we went to 96.3%. Thank you. The next indicator related to the implementation of the workplace skills plan. The annual target was 100% implementation. 
quarter one target was 25% and that was that target was achieved. Quarter two, the plan was to implement 30% of the plan. We were also able to achieve that target. Um, the next indicator related to the implementation of the annual internal audit plan. The annual target was to fully implement the plan at 100%. Quarter one, 20% or was the target which was achieved. Quarter two, the target was to implement 30% of the plan. Um, that, that target was not fully met. We were only able to register progress of 225 um, And there was one audit uh, which could not be concluded by the end of September due to the availability of the resource um, allocated um, that um, audit. However, we are happy to indicate that that audit was concluded in the third quarter. Uh, thank you, Petra. The next one related to indicator was on the implementation of the communication strategy um, in the plan, the 2021-2022 strategy and plan um, for the first quarter we were able to fully meet our target. And in the second quarter, all the targets were also achieved. The target on the review uh, and the development of a 2022-2023, we did not have targets both in the first and the second quarter. Next one. The next target related to the percentage of procurement of goods and services both from the triple BEE um, and maintaining a triple BEE compliant um, businesses and on the SMMEs, the first target related to the 100% expenditure being achieved on triple BEE. Um, that target was achieved both in the first and in the second quarter. The second target related to 30% expenditure generated from procurement of goods and services uh, from SMMEs. Quarter one, we registered 69.02%, and in quarter two, we registered 68.62%. So those targets were met. Indicator number eight was implementing initiative to support the tourism recovery. Um, um, quarter one, the target was to develop a framework um, guided by the risk-adjusted uh, strategy. Um, the framework was not finalized in quarter one, but was finalized in quarter two in the implementation of procurement uh, of commercial values um, for departmental conferences, uh, meetings, and training were therefore finalized. The next one related to the payment of invoices within the prescribed time frame, which is within 30 days. And the target for the first quarter was to ensure that 100% of all invoices are paid, which was achieved. Quarter two, the target was not achieved. We were only able to register 97.92%. Um, and the reason was the late submission uh, of invoices by some officials within the department. The CFO has moved with speed in issuing non-compliance letters to as part of the remedial uh, action to ensure this does not recur. Thank you. The target number, indicator number 10 was on implementation of initiative to promote reasonable access. There were seven initiatives um, identified for the entire financial year. Uh, quarter one, it was the development uh, of the 2020-2021 uh, report on the job access uh, strategic framework, which was uh, finalized. The second quarter target was to provide a report on the state of workplace assistive devices, uh, which were therefore, which report was finalized and submitted. The second target related to the implementation of the job access strategic framework, um, which was done for quarter one. Quarter two was to convene a disability management forum, which was done in August, 2021. 
The next one was on the number of initiatives implemented to promote gender equity. Eight initiatives were targeted um, as an annual target. Um, quarter one focused on the development of the um, report on gender equality strategic framework, which was submitted. And the second quarter was on hosting the Women's Month program, which was also done in August. The second target related to the 2021-2022 um, gender equality strategic framework, which was finalized and is currently being implemented. Quarter two, we continued with the implementation and the, amongst other, the departmental gender forum was hosted in July, 2021. The um, last target, last indicator, excuse me, related to initiatives to promote integrity and ethical conduct. The first quarter, there were a number of applications for remunerative works, which remunerative work, which were submitted and were therefore processed and a report submitted to the risk management committee. Um, we also created awareness on the amended gift policy within the department in September 2021. The second target um, related to uh, finalization or providing support. Uh, to SMS members on the submission of financial disclosures. Support was provided and the disclosures were finally submitted to the Public Service Commission. Remunerative work in the second quarter was also uh, attended to and a report submitted to the Risk Management Committee. The second quarter target also sub provided support in the finalization of financial disclosure for MMS and other designated officials, which were also submitted. Um, thank you, Petra. I will now um, take you through the human resource information. The total departmental establishment at the end of September was at 456, 88.4% represent uh, um, Africans, 4.6 were colored, Asians were at 3.3, which therefore constitute the 96% of blacks reported earlier, and whites were at 3.7. Um, and um, the number or percentage of people living with disability remained at 4.4%. Thank you, Petra. We will now focus on employees for occupational bend. Um, you will note, um, honorable members, that in terms of the um, female representation uh, within the department, we are um, a majority at 57.4%. However, there are two areas where we still need um, to do a lot of work. If you look at senior management, senior management males are 29, while females are 26. Um, and women are below males by 3%. If you look at semi-skilled um, discretionary and decision-making, males are at 16, women are at 13, so we still have that three, um, 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 different, the, the three employee difference between the two. However, overall, women are in the majority and um, on comfortable numbers um, that will be easy to maintain. So we are focusing our attention on achieving the two categories where we have not met and continuing to maintain the numbers where we have comfortably met the female representation. Thank you. Thank you, honorable members. Thank you, uh, DG, DM with your team. Uh, I will now uh, invite honorable members. Oh, is there someone who is speaking on the platform? Honorable Chairperson, the, the, C, the, CF, the acting CFO. Oh, he's coming, he's doing the financials. Yes, thank you, Honorable Okay, my humble apologies. Eh? 
Good, uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable Deputy Minister, um, Honorable Members, uh, DG and colleagues. Uh, <clears throat> the budget and expenditure review as at the 30th, of, 30th of September, the end of the second quarter. Um, in terms of uh, program by program expenditure, which is reflected on the first slide, administration uh, has spent 305,279 million. I mean, they had a budget of 305,279 million, and the expenditure was 125.4 million. Uh, and that accounts for 41% expenditure against budget. The variance is 179.8 million. Uh, the, the materials variances um, explanations thereof uh, for program one is that the bulk of the underspending is attributed to slow spending on office accommodation due to a delay in invoices received from the Department of Public Works. Um, in addition, um, colleagues and chair, um, chair, is that they were effects of COVID-19 also had an effect in terms of underspending in the areas of um, travel um, and subsistence uh, venues and, and so forth. In terms of program two, tourism research policy and international relations, the total budget allocation is 1.382 billion. The expenditure to end of second quarter is 636.1 uh, million. Uh, that translates to a 46% expenditure. Uh, the, the, the variance in terms of underspending is 746 million. Um, the underspending in, in this program is mainly attributed to slow spending by the department due to the effects of COVID-19 pandemic on the tourism industry. Um, you will recall that this was restricted international and domestic travel during these two quarters to a certain extent. Um, and then this uh, resulted in slow spending in the areas of travel and subsistence, venues, et cetera, which is basically the bulk of the work within this uh, program. I mean, um, program three, destination development. The budget allocation was 305.5 million. Expenditure to in the second quarter was 60.1 million. Uh, this translates to a 20% uh, expenditure. Uh, unspent was 245.4 million. The underspending in this program is mainly attributed to slow spending with an expanded public works program due to the effects of COVID-19 pandemic on the tourism industry. Program four is tourism sector support services. The budget allocated was 436.5 million. Uh, spent to the end of second quarter was 43.1 million. Uh, this translates to a 10% expenditure against budget. Unspent is 393.3 million. The underspending is mainly attributed to uh, Port Indy, which has delayed tranche payments to the Tourism Equity Fund. So overall, the, the department had has spent 864.9 million of its budget of 2.429 billion, which is a 36% expenditure. Unspent is 1.564 billion. We move to the next slide. This, uh, it reflects the uh, expenditure for economic classification. Um, under current payments, compensation of employees, we had a budget allocation of 333 million. We spent 163.9 million, which translates to a 49% expenditure. Goods and services is a 471.4 million budget. Uh, spent is 80.1 million, uh, which translates to 17% expenditure against budget. Under transfers and subsidies, departmental agencies and accounts, uh, the budget allocated was 1.3 billion. Spent is 605.2 million, which translates to a 46% expenditure. In the category of foreign governments and international organizations, the budget was 2.641 million. Spent is 2.47 million, which translates to 92% spent. 
public corporations and private enterprises, 310 million rand was allocated. Nothing has been spent, um, which is a 0% expenditure. This particular category relates back to the um, tourism equity fund, which is, which large, which is largely uh, within this category where we were prevented from spending because of the court interdict. The next category is non-profit institutions. The budget was 431 million. Expenditure was 431 million. So 100% expenditure achieved in that category. Under the category of household, 3.714 million was budgeted. 2.18 million was spent. And that means 79% of the budget has been spent. Under capital assets, buildings and other fixed stru structures, um, there was no budget allocated um, at the outset for this um, for this particular category. But seven million then was spent on project on, on on project, which is an overspending in that category. I must add that um, um, at the onset, one is not clear about which category of expenditure you you will spend on in terms of the EPWP. Depends on projects that come on stream and the progress that are that is made. Hence, you'll find that you're not necessarily budgeting for uh, for this category um, early in the year. Machinery and equipment: three comma zero four million was budgeted. Three comma one five million was spent. Um, so we've spent the entire budget. Uh, actually, spent one hundred four percent of that. And the software and other intangible assets. 942,000 was budgeted, 154,000 has been spent, which is 16% of the budget. Um, on the payment for financial assets, uh, this is uh, in respect of uh, losses written off. Uh, we don't normally budget for that at the outset, but expenditure on terms of losses is 127 million rand. I mean, 177,000 rand. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Um, we'd like to bring to attention of the members the expenditure on fruitless and wasteful and irregular expenditure during the course of the year. Under fruitless and wasteful expenditure for the period ending 30th of September 2021, uh, fruitless and expenditure amounted to 12,000 rand. This was for late cancellation, no shows, and flight and amendments with regard to travel bookings. Um, this this Expenditure was investigated and the entire amount of 12,000 was recovered from officials. Regarding irregular expenditure for the period, um, the expenditure amounted to 960,000. It should be mentioned that this was for the two cases of irregular expenditure of irregular award of tender quotes that were reported in the previous financial year, where expenditure had been realized in the current year. Uh, as the DG has said, the bids were awarded in 2020-21, uh, but the contract period is more than 12 months. So on the same um, award, whatever expenditure is realized uh, also during 21-22 has been has to be disclosed as irregular expenditure. There were no new cases uh, during uh, the first two quarters of the year in terms of irregular expenditure. Um, that brings me to the end of my portion of the presentation. Thank you. DG, do you have anything to add? Okay. This concludes our, our, our presentation, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, thank you very much, uh, DMDG, with your team uh, on this presentation that you have given to us on your uh, performance uh, indicators on uh, for quarter quarter one and quarter two, respectively. Comrade, honourable members, uh, what I can deduce from this presentation is that. The department is informing the portfolio committee that 
for the two quarters that we are reviewing, the department operated in an environment that impacted uh, negatively to its performance. So its overall, in, overall performance in the two quarters was impacted negatively by the environment that uh, the department found itself operating under. And there were targets that were beyond their control in terms of achieving because COVID in a sense uh, brought in uh, things that we did not know, the, un the, the unknown, uh, how things will be implemented and how we should be navigating around the unknown uh, impacted the department in terms of its uh, deliverables, in terms of its service delivery uh, objectives. However, um, honorable members, I will afford the opportunity to honorable members to be able to give comments, ask questions where they feel that the departments need to give adequate uh, accountability for non-performance and also seek for clarity where they believe that uh, perhaps issues are not put out uh, explicitly so. I will now uh, invite Honorable uh, Moteka, who will be followed by the Honorable Winkler. Uh, Honorable Moteka. Thank you, you Chairperson. First, first in line. Yes. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, Honorable Moteka, you are very audible. Thank you very much and greetings to all my colleagues. I'm saying uh, Happy New Year and also the personnel from the Department of Tourism and the Deputy Minister and, and his team. Chairperson, I, I just have two, two concerns which are also questions. You know, the issue of wasteful expenditure and fruitless expenditure appears in each and every report. So my question is, is this not avoidable? As, because it, it comes now and then. Is it not avoidable? And not going far, Exactly on this report, I want the DG to explain where exactly did they waste the resources? Where exactly did they utilize uh, the resources of the people fruitlessly? And then how are they going to stop it from happening going forward? Because we can't keep on reading fruitless expenditure as if it's the is a, is a slogan of the, of, of, of the department every month, every quarter, every year. It can happen, uh, 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 Again, Again, with irregular expenditure. You know, when I start joining this uh, portfolio committee, the, it was running around 94,000 if my my memory is still is still is still quite correct. Ninety four thousand somewhere there, and of course it went down and all that. But it's still it's always there. It's always there. irregular. Irregular. To my understanding, it means you didn't follow the processes. You didn't follow the 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 the, the set standards. Why is it happening now and then? Why are we not learning from the uh, history? Why this is coming now and then? We, 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 we don't care anymore about that you have reduced the amount and all, but it is happening. Why is it happening? Chairperson, until we, we find solution for, for the two, 
laziness, corruption, and waste will, will continue and our people will suffer as a result. Thank you very much. Uh, that was my two concerns and two questions. Let them uh, tell us exactly what did they waste this time, this time. Don't talk about the previous years and all that. This time, why did they waste the people's resources and where did they, uh, did they utilize our resources fruitlessly? Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Winkler. Uh, good morning, um, and, and thank you um, to the presenters, and thank you for the presentations. I have a few questions. The first is, what is the progress on the policy review um, program? Um, how far is the panel, and um, how have, have they managed to catch up on the reported delays prior to this? Uh, then... What has the minister done in terms of engagements with the sector um, on the ground to find out, for instance, if in case in um, how the sector has handled or coped or how the department can assist after the riots that happened last year? Um, and across the board, has the minister engaged in any of the MINMEC meetings? Um, when, was, when was that? Um, and for which provinces? Then I'd like to know about the underspending in mostly all of the programs. Um, why is this a consistent finding with regards to underspending? Um, and how can we ensure that we're actually um, adequately spending the budget um, to keep up with the targets as envisaged? Um, then with regards to the, the legalities of AFRI Forum and Solidarity, um, against the tourism department, has the minister and the department engaged with these external organizations so that there aren't these recurrent issues of um, court interdict, etc.? Um, that's all for me so far. Thank you. Thank you, honorables. Um, I will now invite uh, honorable Gomba, honorable Melina Gomba, who will be followed by the honorable uh, Ketamabala Stoll. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Uh, Chair, my questions are with regards to um, the, um, I will start with what the DG has mentioned earlier on when he was mentioning the effect of, the fact that um, there was, there were delays due to global uh, logistics. So, uh, uh, how are they uh, planning to improve the procurement uh, processes? Uh, because um, I believe that if we continue with the global logistics and also um, dealing with the, uh, uh, if we want to improve the procurement, um, I think it is important that we consider uh, what the, the, the previous two sonas, according to the president, have said. We need to begin to do our own, um, support our own South African products, as well as uh, uh, making sure that our own South African product and businesses are growing. So if this international and global logistic is still continuing and actually even hindering on the processes, of our own uh, service delivery, I become very much worried. Our own departments must make sure that they also adhere to the to the to the sauna. Um, uh, what the president have said during the sauna and ensure that they comply according to what the president have said. So this international trading cannot be an excuse to us for failing to deliver services for our, to our people when we have our own products in South Africa. Uh, Honorable Chair, also, um, we are looking at um, the, 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 the report here, which is talking about the 36%. I, I've, I've heard you also during your introduction in the meeting, you said 36% has, has, has been spent so far. I'm worried because I think in the next coming month or two, 
will be now going to the, yeah, I think we are in February and in March, we'll be entering our new financial year in end of March. So I'm worried if we are so much behind and our percentage is running very, very low like this, and we're only left with one month to complete the financial year. How is it, how is our uh, final uh, percentage going to, what is our final percentage going to be if this is the percentage that we are running currently at 36% spending uh, as the department? So I'm very much worried about that. It shows that, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, we are having a very, very planning and uh, a very, very poor planning and unrealistic planning in all the programs that we're coming with. Because if we were very, very smart with our targets and ensuring that they are implementable, I don't think we could be running so low with our percentage, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. And also, what is our monitoring and evaluation tool that we are, we are having? You know, the tool that will check and keep on checking our performance throughout all the quarters. It looks like that tool is failing to, to prevail. There is no tool that is there to ensure that we are evaluating ourselves and we are monitoring if process, if progress, sorry, if progress is there in our department. So I am very much worried. It's like something is loose there. Um, there's no um, a, a center holding in, in terms of monitoring and evaluation there in that management. Also, Honorable Chair, you know, I'm getting very much worried. Uh, we've had, I've had so many um, excuses about appointment of service provider from Maditong Kisitwaba when she was talking about the uh, appointment of service providers as an excuse, this has been an excuse that has been coming out from all the previous reports that we have received. And that ultimately resulted into very poor performance at the end of the financial years that have been there, have been there and serving as a committee member. So it is uh, very much worrying to hear that we have also um, people who are not appointed because the, uh, the process is always slow. And also, Chair, it gives me a different mind with regard to that because if you have your, 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 your system in place that has also the bidders who are on, their, on your database, why do we always have a delay in appointing your service provider? Unless if there are clinches when coming to to appointment of people and maybe the misunderstanding amongst the same officials as to who must be the preferred bidder. So I think the minister needs to dig deeper into that and investigate as to why always when you have to do procurement processes, we have delays and end up failing to service the, 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 to do the service delivery. It cannot be delayed by our own internal corruption issues and, and, and and squabbles and misunderstanding around the procurement processes. Uh, Honorable Chair, I also want to say, um, I have had also a, an appointment of a service provider who did not meet the, trip, the BEE as a requirement. And at the end of the day, they had to withdraw that service provider due to the fact that that service provider did not meet the BEE. How did it come that he becomes the service provider when he does not even meet the certain standards according to the, to the document that invited them to, to bid? So it means there was also an appointment of a person who was, it was an irregular a process of appointing this person because you're supposed to, before you appoint, make a follow up that the person in, uh, is, is uh, meeting all the criteria and, and all the requirements by the document itself, uh, stipulated in the document itself. So it means we, we are still having some corrupt officials there in the procurement and in the tendering processes, because we cannot leave a person up to a certain level 
appoint a person and reach a certain level with that person who is wrongfully appointed and withdraw that person very, very late in the stage at the time we're supposed to be implementing programs. So corruption is still a lot in that department, uh, Honorable Chair, that uh, we, we really need to zoom on. Um, Honorable Chair, Them. No, let me not let me not waste time because I've wrote a, a lot of things here, uh, which I still have to. Yes, I also want to understand, Honorable Chair, the the vacancy occupation rate there, because sometimes we will think that it's budget, but you you find that maybe there's no capacity or enough people to perform the duty uh, in, at the at the lower level. What is the vacancy occupation rate there? Because I fail to understand why are we failing to implement the plan? Mm -hmm. Is it because there's shortage of staff or we did not fill all the vacancies as according to the plan? The last question, Honorable Chair, which I want to understand from the finance department, there is this um, performance management system, which I don't hear uh, most of our officials talking about because it, it touches on their appraisal system and also it is also touching on their performance. So it is always avoided to speak about and I will always raise it because from where I'm coming from, that's what we used, that's where we used to measure whether, uh, are, we, are we really uh, 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 getting value for money as government for the salaries that we are paying our, our, our officials? Is the value for money for the salaries that are being paid for, for the work performed. So it is very important for us to get the performance management system and their appraisals uh, so that we can be able to see whether we have the right people who are supposed to be performing these duties or not. Because I see a lot of failure in the whole department and there was no way we can say we have people who must be appraised when the performance is so much poor. So we need that, I need that report, Honorable Chair, just to sensitize myself and understanding and understand if we really pay people and there's value for money for, for what the government is spending on the salaries. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable Ketamabana. Honorable Thank you. Stolle. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, first of all, I want to thank the, the presentation because it was an eye-opener and it confirmed what we always complaining about, the understanding of the department. Now, Chairperson, I, I have some few questions that I, I would be very happy if, uh, if the department can, can, can answer them, uh, actually, properly. The first one is that I'm trying to check the unskilled of the trench chair youth. If they do have a, a figure of, of, of those unskilled uh, uh, youth which were, were retrenched, and if they could give us per province or per district. And then the other one, chairperson, is that one the vacancy, because I'm worried about chairperson, because according to the report, it shows that there is some vacancy that happened because they are un unfunded. There is no money to, 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 to fill those vacancy. I am trying to check how many of those vacancy that, that were, not, uh, were not funded, if they can give us per, 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 per program. And there were other on chairperson, if you check the program two, where they say is the draft discussion document outlining police area was finalized at the end of May, 2021 and submitted to the minister for input in May, 2021, submitted to minister in 2020, in for his or her input. But it, if you check even until today, that input has not been finalized. 
and they're supposed to 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 do some uh, some in incorporated uh, ideas to 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 actually advertise for for public comment. I'm trying to check: do they have any time frame to to all this, these processes, or they just put them in in in, in on hold until uh, until Jesus come back? Because it, it doesn't make sense if you are saying in May 21 they submitted to the minister. But until today, there is no implementation. There is no program. There is nothing that is happening in in the department. If if honourable chairperson, if they can unpack that one and tell us actually what is happening. And the other one, chairperson, is that one on program four. They say the service provider to implement the domestic tourism schemes was not appointed. However, terms of, of reference for the appointment of, of a service provider and concept document were developed. According to them, they said the concept was developed. But at the end, they say there was a need to develop a new concept document and processes took, took longer than it was anticipated. There's a contradiction, Church Jefferson. If they can actually unpack that and give us a clear idea what, actually, what is happening, because if things are like this, it means the department is going nowhere. They, they, it is very difficult for them to, to meet their target. And the other one, Chairperson, which is this uh, under, uh, under, uh, under, uh, under program four, they talk about the service provider still to be appointed for the other two provinces and delays were due to supply chain management, supply chain management, management process. Chairperson, can they actually guide us, make, uh, make us to understand actually what is happening in the department if things are, are falling apart like this? I, I, and under our Chairperson, which will, which will be the, the last one, under financially, if you check chairperson, the sixty-four percent underspending. That is not an underspending of the department. It is an underspending that's supposed to go to people's, uh, to to go to communities for for their services. It, it means that we are delayed because of of the, of some processes in the in the department which are not been fulfilled that is supposed to be. Please, Chairperson, can they give us the guideline now and the understanding how all, all these uh, uh, questions, how, how are they going to, to implement, to, to fulfill the, the, the department target? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorables. Uh, I now uh, invite a, a note, uh, Honorable Mpushe will be followed by Honorable Sanganani Kumbi. Honorable Mpushe. Sorry, Chair, please note my hand is raised also. Yes, I think uh, Honorable April, I will note in the second round. Uh, Honorable Mpushe, uh, if Honorable Mpushe is not on the, on the platform, uh, I, are you Chair. on the platform? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, Chair. Uh, yeah, you can, you can thanks, go Chair. on. Uh, greetings to the Honorable DM. Uh, honorable members, uh, the departmental officials led by the DG, um, our own support staff as the portfolio committee. Uh, Chair, firstly, I would like to appreciate and welcome the presentation um, as, as, as a true reflection of uh, what is uh, happening within our department. Uh, firstly, Chair, in terms of questions, what has been uh, done? The, the DG presented that there's on the 960 uh, irregular expenditure, uh, which was incurred in 2021. Um, previously, they have uh, presented on that. Uh, 
my 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 question then therefore is that what has been done since our previous engagement to mitigate uh, this uh, also chairperson on program four and three it's a worrying factor chairperson because both programs are critical drivers of transforming uh, the sector I'm not sure uh, in terms of the equity fund, tourism equity fund, has uh, the minister had had any engagements with the AFRI forum outside the 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 court uh, judgment? Um, oh, I'm not seeing my writing now. <laughs> Also, Chairperson, uh, I, I wish to concur with uh, Honorable Gomba on the uh, PMDS. Um, it's as if she has read my mind that uh, those program managers with, with uh, uh, underperformance, we, we, we need to see as to what is the department doing to ensure that uh, they, they, they perform. Yes, we have been affected by COVID-19 severely, but there has to be measures in place to ensure that work is taking place. Uh, the, the, the program that deals with enhancing tourism development in the villages, township and small dorpies is a priority uh, of our committee. Yet the department is experiencing delays, processing of and appointing of uh, service providers. What is causing these delays? Does the SCM of the department uh, need a reviewing or reviewal? Uh, <clears throat> it's concerning that in most of the underperformance and the delays, it seems as though there are challenges within the SEM of the department. What measures are there to improve the SEM uh, processes, uh, Chairperson? And how far is the department in terms of appointing uh, the CEO? Uh, another one, Chair. Are there any plans to improve ex expanding in the next quarter uh, with the 36% uh, understanding uh, that they have had. Um, also, I'm not sure they were on, in the presentation, what is it that uh, the program manager will do to ensure that program three targets will be achieved? As, as it, it was raised in the, in, the, in the presentation. Does the department have plans to improve private public partnerships to develop and transform the sector, like upskilling the unemployed youth? On the irregular awarding of tenders, yes, that's, that's what I was raising earlier. On the irregular awarding of tenders, does the DG presentation suggests that the matter has been sorted out. Um, I'm, I'm not sure on this one, Chair. Maybe I, I need a bit. There is an issue that has to do with the concept document, which had gaps. And unfortunately, those gaps were not uh, 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 tabled. Uh, because here we are talking about the budget, which was meant to be spent. Now they are coming up with the fact that uh, the concept document had to be, they had to develop a new concept document. My understanding is that concepts are done with estimated budget. I need to be clarified on, on, on this one, uh, Chairperson. Also, it also indicates to me, my own observation, that uh, if they would have 
to later develop concept documents, poor quality assurance within the department, uh, Chairperson. Uh, I think that will be all for now, uh, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairperson. Thanks for the presentation. So uh, I think I've just got two uh, questions. The one is uh, an echo of Honorable Winkler's question around the policy review uh, and when it's uh, being completed, because uh, at least to some degree, a policy review touches on various areas um, of the department and its impact. The second one, uh, uh, and I, I, I know that I know that, for instance, in the in the, the previous uh, portfolio committee, uh, we spoke about uh, consequence management and uh, the report which is coming around that. But uh, could could we have an update on any on any uh, specific uh, um, interventions or what or what the department is looking at with regards to the general performance management? Um, of its managers, senior managers, and in particular in the supply chain management, and that that goes beyond uh, that goes beyond the fact that there may have been contracts and something goes wrong, and therefore you you manage that specific uh, um, um, error that went wrong. I'm talking about the actual performance management, so that like a business, so that the department actually performs better, so that we're not coming back uh, uh, um, with with, uh, with, with, with reports showing us that things aren't getting better and that they actually are, and that there's actually a genuine um, intervention which makes, which tightens things up uh, for the future. So that's, those are my two questions, thanks. Uh, uh, thank you, honorables. I will now uh, note uh, honorable April who will be followed by honorable Treko. Honorable April. Thank you so very much, Chairperson, and thank you for the presentation that was given by the department. Uh, one would say it sounds uh, like a repetition of the same old, same old. And uh, I would like to, to point out that during the epidemic, it is indeed tourism that has been hit the hardest as a sector. And its contribution towards the economy is something that we cannot argue about. It is empirical that it must be some a department that works and that functions. It is very disheartening to find that the budget spent is the same as the trajectory of the times that we were on more strict lockdowns and that uh, the reports that we are getting is not very, is not giving us a lot of confidence as far as this is, is concerned. Chairperson, I must also indicate that I am very worried that from program one up until program four, one finds that uh, there is underspending on all of the programs. I want to suggest that this indicates that there is absolutely a leadership vacuum and there is absolutely a need to thoroughly assess uh, the responsibility that we've been given to do oversight over the public's purse and the fact that this thing is, that, that the spending is so worrying it points back to lack of leadership, accountability, and consequence management, as it was alluded by my, to by my colleague. Uh, Chairperson, I would also like to say that uh, when I look at what the department has done and what it, is, what it has achieved and what, what, um, what jobs was created, I want to make note of uh, the, the following things. I've seen in the financial year, uh, the Department of Tourism has only placed 100 uh, uh, 1,064 tourism monitors uh, in the Presidential Employment Stimulus Program. Uh, these are jobs that is being created uh, for our people, our people on the ground, Africans in the sector of tourism. It is a big shame that we see that the Department of Tourism only has about 1,064 tourism monitors uh, that they applied for. My question one is, Though I understand the, the minister inherits this dismal performance, why did the department not participate meaningfully in that pr presidential program? It shows a lack uh, of, of, of willingness from the department to, to, to help us with job creation, specifically in the sector that has suffered so much and lost, shed so many jobs. 
My second question is, as the department, uh, the department, the department is one of those that has been the worst heat sectors. Were they not supposed to have applied for, f f applied for and created even more jobs than the education created 287,000 jobs? And education never even lost any jobs to COVID, but our department is reporting none of those things to us. My third question is, is there any references to the presidential employment uh, scheme target in your recovery plan? And what will be done differently during the next PES window? Is the department even looking at creating jobs or is the department really worried that should they apply for, for, for the PES scheme, they would not be able to spend the money because either they don't have the skills or they don't have the willingness or as Honorable Gomba has said, they, the corruption is just so deep that people don't want to move unless, unless it's their people that move. We're going to have to look deeply into this because at the end of the day, the bucket comes, to, to, comes back to stand with us who is elected, not like uh, the, department, the departmental officials that is employed. Those of us that are elected, the electorate ask us these questions. People have been knocking on the doors of the, the department, screaming for assistance, and they haven't gotten it. And here we get reports of serious underspending. This is an indictment on all of us. And we should absolutely make these responses, the, 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 those employed by the department take uh, responsibility for this uh, uh, chairperson. I thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable uh, uh, Hein April. Honorable T.S. Kreko. Yes, Chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, Thank you to the department uh, for accounting back to us uh, with regards to their first and second quarter performance. Uh, Chairperson, uh, I understand that uh, tourism is about traveling, sleeping over and spending. Uh, so, now that there was a lockdown in Gauteng, I understand that you other provinces were difficult to reach because Gauteng is a gateway to other provinces. Chairperson, uh, SDG was giving account of the non-performance or let me say less performance uh, where they did not meet other targets. They, account, they were accounting for the first and second quarters. I hope, Chairperson, that when they come back with the third quarter and the fourth quarter, the situation will be better. They must up their sleeves so that we get something better, Chair. If they were at 36% spending by the second quarter, uh, I am afraid now because we are less than two months to the next financial year. As uh, Honorable Gomba alluded to. I am also worried, Chair, about the zero spending on the tourism equity fund. DG did account about this, but Chair, I am worried because uh, at least we are 28 years in our democracy. I did not think as a person that we can be interdicted for implementing our own policy as a country. It means something must be done. I thought since we have an implementing agent, which I think it's safer. I thought the money is already with them by then. But I got it that the, 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 the money is still with the department and because of the interdict, they are unable to move. But my suggestion would be just something must be done. The political leadership must think of something else and also communities or else beneficiaries to those that made applications 
to the fund must be given reasons for non-implementation check. They must be updated. Uh, I also got the reason for late appointment of or, or delay in the appointment of service providers share. DG did allude to something like that, uh, highlighting the, that it was during lockdown, big committees had difficulty in sitting. But I, I was to ask a question to say, is the situation still the same? Or since we are at another level now of lockdown now, things are going for better. So that we are able to understand the, the trends in the implementing or implementation of the budget. I also have a question, Chair, around the, they, they should update us on the employment of the finance manager. Did they successfully employ the finance, the finance manager? What update can they give us now, Chairperson? Uh, Chair, there are targets that are more than 60% met. There are those that are at 42. Reasons were given, but it is not for us to say the tourism industry agrees with them. We are getting the explanation now, uh, and we I think even the industry does get that information. Chairperson, I had those concerns with me, but uh, the DG also alluded to the fact that the irregular expenditure is not for this year, it's for the previous years. But what we are trying to prevent are the repeat findings by the Auditor General. We are raising this uh, as a sign of cautioning them. We did receive their plan last week, which we appreciated. I think they must stick to that plan. They must implement that plan. Uh, Chair, I think that was all that I was to raise at this moment. Thank you very much. But my concern is that since the money is still with them, not with the implementing agent, I think there is something that the leadership of the department must do because this was targeting those that were negatively affected by the lockdowns. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable uh, T.S. Uh, Honorable Mieni, Honorable Togozani Mieni. Honorable Mieni, are you on the platform? Uh, Honorable Mieni seems not to be responding. Honorable members, I also have a two, okay, one question and then a comment. Uh, before we invite the department to respond to the questions raised by the honorable members. Uh, DG and your team, uh, together with a DM, is it possible for us to quantify the number of jobs that we did not uh, achieve in terms of the delays in implementing a, or non-implementations of the project that deals with the EPWP programs? Is it possible for us to a, perhaps give an estimate to say, these were the number of jobs that we were going to a, employ a, or, or provide within the EPWP or the skills transfer uh, coupled with the job opportunities. And because of these delays, we were not able to uh, implement that. And that amounts to a certain number of uh, jobs. And then 
the second comment or that it's, 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 it's on the interdict by AFRI Forum and the implementation of the tourism transformation uh, uh, fund. If I get a sense from honorable members who have spoken on this matter, DG, they are saying perhaps let the department move towards reaching middle ground uh, with those that have interdicted the implementation of the fund in its current model. Because it was a court process and court processes can tend to uh, take time. We are saying as the portfolio committee, let the political heads together with yourself as the accounting officer, try to bring AFRI Forum back to the table and start speaking to AFRI Forum so that we, you can, uh, with the guidance of uh, perhaps your legal team, get to middle ground so that we are not uh, reporting zero uh, implementation or zero expenditure on such a crucial uh, and important fund that seeks to ensure that the, the tourism or the tourism industry or, or the sector does transform because from reports, uh, we can we, we, we understand that transformation is happening at a slow pace. So this fund was trying to quicken or ensure that some aspects of transformation are actually quickened. Uh, and because of uh, this standoff between uh, these parties, there is no movement. We, uh, the, the portfolio committee saying, let's bring them back on the table and let's find a common ground. Uh, I will now invite you to respond to our questions and our comments. Uh, uh, honorable members, I will invite you in the second round of, a, a, of a questions. I see there are few honorable members uh, who have who were afforded the opportunity to ask questions and comments who have also raised their hands now, but I will invite you after we have received the responses from this round of a question and answer session. A, Mr. DG, together with your team. Thank you, Honorable Jefferson. Uh, we are going to to do division of labor amongst ourselves. And uh, we will also leave some of the, the areas that, that uh, uh, border on policy related matters uh, for, for the DM. Uh, we, 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 we do take note, uh, your, your, your last comment, Honorable Chair, so we take note of that. Um, Obviously, it is a policy matter in terms of uh, uh, way forward. Uh, as things stand, there is an approved scheme. So that particular approved scheme forms some sort of a policy uh, of how this should unfold and so on. So we, we do take note of that uh, and, and we will take, we'll take further guidance from, from, from our political principals uh, within the department. The other aspect, Honorable Chairperson, that uh, I would like to highlight, I know the Rato will come in and speak uh, to more detail, your question about quantification. I think one of the things to, 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 to take note of, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, is the fact that the, what would have been the half year what would have been the half year target of the job opportunities as per our targets has been achieved. What was not achieved is the exact second quarter because the bulk of that had actually been taken care of in the first quarter. So, so I, I thought I should just clarify that so that 
uh, we we are able to to to, to highlight uh, where 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 the, the the real challenge is. The issue related to the recruitment of the chief financial officer. Uh, that process is underway. Uh, we, we do have the, the CVs now from the advertisements that we ran, and we'll be proceeding with that particular process. Um, the, the other areas, uh, I think the CFO will speak to issues of fees and so on, but uh, the, the committees are sitting, uh, they are processing things, and, and indeed, this report is for the first six months. Uh, and we, we restricted ourselves to that uh, for accountability purposes. It's for the first six months of the year. And that particular period ended at the end of September 2021. So there's still a period from October, November, December, including January, where there's a number of things that were actually taking place throughout that particular process. As I reported earlier, uh, and CFO will also come in, the, the money that, that is supposed to uh, be uh, transferred to CIFA for the purposes of this uh, tourism equity fund, that money has already been transferred to CIFA. But you will be able to see that in the reports that will come of the subsequent quarters, not the report of the first six months. So I, I thought I should allude to that. The second aspect, um, honorable members would recall that during the medium term uh, budget, there was an adjustment that was actually made. And that particular adjustment was to also provide for the capital projects that are run by DBSA. And subsequent to that, we were then able to provide for the funding in that regard. So that would also be very clear in terms of the expenditure. The further tranches that we provide for South African tourism would have also gone through during that particular period, uh, subsequent to this six months, which will then also be able to demonstrate that this is where the expenditure would have actually been. So I do believe that the, the, CA, the acting CFO would be in a, in a, in a position to, 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 to appraise the honorable members in, in, that, in that regard. Now, one of the things that really, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's the way you do it, you have to do it extremely diligently, is when the processes, uh, because uh, there are rules that we've got to apply when you are going through these procurement processes. Now, one of the controls that we have got to make sure that we don't incur unnecessary irregularities, is that once the process of identifying uh, all these and has been completed, those who are deemed to be the successful bidder, we then have a further responsibility to make sure that what they had stated and was valid at the beginning of the process still remains valid at the end of the process. So this would be that B certificate that was submitted, is it still valid as was at that time? That tax clearance certificate, is it still valid as was at that particular time? And this happens quite a lot, whether with uh, 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 agencies that would have uh, uh, assigned responsibilities to run out certain projects for us, and as they get those third parties, they've got to go through the same processes. Similarly, we go through those particular processes internally. When we do find that a person or a company, the things that they've submitted are no longer valid, they have expired, we don't then proceed and then say this is the case. Now, in the event that you find that that was the successful and you don't have an alternative and whatever, in the ones that have actually come out uh, in, from that bidding process. You have got no choice, but you have got to go back and do the process accordingly. And that is what it is, is the rules that come with um, the, 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 the nature of work that we do in government. And, and that, that process, that clinical process and that due diligence 
is the same thing that if we don't do it in that way, then we are going to end up with irregularities. And those irregularities at the end of the day would have implications, not just for the individuals, but it will also have implications for the system. So it is really a question of having to look at all these sets of rules that we've got to go through and fine tooth comb. You've got to tick each, each. You can't skip a step. And as you do that, you are doing it so that you don't end up with uh, things that would actually have materiality and all those kinds of things, and that would end up to qualifications and that would end up to losses and stuff like that. So these are the ways that we actually have to go through for us to be in a position to attend to these particular matters. The issue related to uh, the presidential employment stimulus. We received um, roughly, I think, approximately 20 million rents. But this money came now with the medium term budget for the next, for the last six months. It's not part of this period. It's not part of this period. It's part of the, the, the period that, 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 that we are not necessarily reporting on now. Now, there is specific standards in terms of how much money should uh, be uh, used for payment of that stipend and so on, uh, what it may or may not be used for, uh, the issues of the ratios in terms of what could then go into material and all those kinds of things and what would then go into the, the human capital issues and all those. Now, when you look at all of those things combined, you would then have to link directly the amount of money that we receive and the work that is going to be done and the people that it can acquire. That's how the whole system actually works. And there is, there is some sort of, uh, how do I put it, uh, constraints in terms of from our side, how much we can actually do with that particular money. So yes, indeed, we, 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 we have to make sure that the things that we make a commitment to, as we are being guided as well, even today, that there must be things that from a planning point of view, we can do them and we can do them successfully. And that's how we have been making sure that we approach this particular matter. Um, so so the, the resources that we received from the question that Honorable April raised, the resources that we received guide the amount of work that can be done and the number of people that can be in the program. Um, and, and, and in our case, uh, we've got people that are in the, the, in the area of maintenance and so on. On the other side, we've got people that are on the area of uh, the safety monitors uh, program. The policy review, um, the, 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 the minister did not receive this uh, much earlier. Uh, this, the, 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 there was a session that uh, brought uh, to the attention of the department the issues that have been identified and what they are going to be sending to the minister and so on. And that was almost like the final clearing house meeting, so to say. Uh, that was around October. That particular meeting identified some challenges in terms of things that uh, may not necessarily be feasible um, because they, 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 they begin to go into areas that uh, I, we don't have any, any uh, mandate over in terms of what the constitution provides. Um, and I can give you an example where someone says, Let's have uh, let's have a, a private sector uh, 
being part of MinMEC as, as part of a decision-making structure. Uh, that's almost that amount to saying let's have ministers and deputy ministers being members of private sector boards. Uh, there are fora where stakeholder engagements take place, but it does not substitute for the mandate given to government by the electorate. And that those are some of the issues that we were looking into and we said, uh, these are the, 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 the views that we've got with regards to what you're saying in terms of the implications of these things broadly with regards to what uh, the overall system, uh, the design of the system is. But there were other things from the side of the COVID which they wanted to go and further consult on. And they said they will go and consult on these things and so on. They then made a request to the minister that they would like to have an extension so that they can deal with those issues. And that extension, they requested it, it ended yesterday, which is 31st of March, I mean, of uh, January. So we are expecting that we will then now be able to receive that particular document. In terms of the consultations, I saw uh, the posting, uh, I think it was from Honorable Winkler. Um, I saw the posting with regards to uh, whether uh, I just want to, to check it. Uh, the posting as to whether there will be consultation with CTOs. And so that consultation of the policy review panel, they, they planned it, they are doing their own consultations and so on. The public consultations of government, when we have got the document that needs to go on public consultation, will be open to all South Africans, open, totally. And then we will be able to receive uh, the different submissions and so on. If those submissions are coming from a CTO or from a business owner or from just a member of the community, a traditional leader and so on, we will then be able to consider all of those uh, ultimately. The, I think Honorable Gumbi raised uh, a question about um, capacity um, and, 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 and systems with regards to supply chain and so on. Uh, there's there's a, a continuous process where we, we, we look at what are the problems that are emerging. Those could be coming from internal audit, they could be coming from external auditors, GSA, and as we see those, we then look at what could be the fundamental root causes of these. Uh, from the presentation that we made last week, we went at length in terms of unpacking the root causes and then clarifying what it is that will be done to address the specific root causes for the system-wide, uh, you know, strengthening the system itself so that we don't look at things as transactions. But over and above that, we do have a process of continuous uh, development of, of, of uh, uh, you know, training and so on, all those kinds of things. We have even drawn closer uh, the head of supply chain management to some of our uh, special top management meetings that deal with the issues of uh, the audits and issues of system-wide, uh, environment and so on, so that we are able to provide uh, our own insights because the DDGs, from where they sit, they are able to see where their programs are hampered. They are able to see where some of the things need to be unblocked and so on. So we make sure that when we have those types of discussions, which is quite regular, um, we make sure that we we also have the supply chain people in that particular environment. The, uh, let me go back to, I, I take the point, I take the point and I think it was raised by Honorable Bush that um, we, we need to avoid recurrence in terms of uh, 
irregular expenditure. And this matter is not yet concluded. The, the AG's finding was that they, they deemed it irregular. Management's submission to the AG was that there was a process and these are the things that have actually occurred. We have now agreed that we take the matter to the chief procurement officer at National Treasury to review that whole deal and be able to see exactly what transpired. And on the basis of what would then come out of that, we will then know what needs to be the treatment of this particular uh, uh, identified challenge. So, so at the moment, it's not closed, but it is a matter that is getting consideration from the side of, uh, of, national, of national treasure. Um, I think I've, I've, I've uh, spent some time on the expenditure itself, but I think we could actually even provide a little bit more with regards to where we are now and so on. But uh, overall, the, the 36% is the half year, which, which, which then means that the 64% the, the, the was not necessarily the under expenditure. 64% was what has not yet been spent until the end of the financial year from the end of September 2021. The, the, those specific issues, um, the, particularly some of the issues on problem four, I will leave them there. I, I want to, to just highlight, uh, I think Albu Gomba raised uh, questions regarding the, 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 the global supply chains and the impact uh, thereof. There, there are certain things that South Africa produces. Uh, there are certain things that even have uh, local, uh, local content, adequate local content and so on. But there are certain things that, yes, we buy from South Africans, but what they are doing is to bring the parts and components and they assemble the things in South Africa. Now, what, what the impact of the global supply chains on that is that those parts and components would not be delivered into the country Timeously for them to be able to put together the, the whatever equipment that you're buying from them. So that is the context of the, the issues related to inability to get uh, certain computer equipment timeously. And also some suppliers um, out of, I would say, uh, 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 their own ethical considerations have been very clear with us to say no, they are not going to quote because they have no certainty as to when they will be able to deliver such to us. Um, I, the issue about uh, what do we do uh, regarding uh, monitoring? So we, we do have various layers of monitoring. Uh, there are, there are top management meetings, which will be between myself, uh, the DDGs, uh, CFO, or now the acting CFO. There are also uh, meetings of uh, management, we call the Manco meetings, and those meetings would be between uh, myself, the DDGs, as well as the chief directors. When the chief directors then go through uh, the details of what they've done, what are the challenges that they're experiencing, and so on. Uh, how best can we improve on some of the areas? And out of those uh, recommendations that come from that collective, we are able to ensure that uh, we are moving forward uh, in a in a better in a better uh, in a better way, so to say. Um, the other layer outside management. Um, is that um, the, the, the internal audit uh, goes through these things and it also finds uh, where there are root causes and so on, and those then are also then integrated into actions of management. And that also goes to 
uh, both the risk management committee, but it also goes to uh, the, the, the audit committee. And that allows us to provide combined assurance in terms of that monitoring. But there are instances where uh, circumstances uh, are, are not uh, favorable for us to be able to deal with challenges. Um, so for, for, for one, one of the examples I would give, uh, the matter of Africa Forum and Solidarity. The first time we had, the uh, very first time we had uh, the Tourism Relief Fund. Honorable members would recall, Tourism Relief Fund was taken to court. It was taken to court. The grounds of which was that you, you should not apply BEE in an environment where there is disaster management. And our argument was that, would you rather want to see, as an example, all the money spent on businesses in Centen and it could be finished the following day, and every other person, whether they're in a village uh, in, 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 in Muleji, whether they are uh, uh, in a village in Kwatoa, and so they should not have any of this money. Is that what we are saying? And we should not then have considerations about empowerment of people. We should then not have considerations about empowerment of persons with disability and all those kinds of things. And these are things that as South Africa and as a department, we are bound by. So we won the first case, the second the part of the case was taken to Supreme Court of Appeal. And that matter is now in the Concord as we speak. Then we come up with the Tourism Equity Fund. Again, it gets to, to, to these court challenges. So, so point I'm trying to make at the core of this, the point I'm trying to make is that there will be certain aspects that uh, department will not necessarily have any control over whatsoever. Um, and, and probably there are much bigger national issues that uh, relate to the social compact of South Africans overall. And those particular issues, if they affect the department, it's not only this department that gets to be affected, there will be other departments that are also affected. Department of Small Business was also taken through the same process. So I'm raising this issue to say there will be things that we have control over and we will deal with that. Amongst which is the fact that where there is instances that point to corruption. And I can say this not only today, I can say it all the time. Where there are instances that point to corruption, we have acted and we have acted in accordance with the rules and made sure that we apply the necessary consequences and we follow through with what needs to be followed through. And the reason why we make sure that we do that is because we want to maintain the integrity of these government, but also particularly of these departments. And where there is evidence of corruption, once that comes to us, we act instantly. We act on that. Um, and and we, have, we, have, we have plenty of evidence to demonstrate that such cases we have dealt with decisively. They have gone through processes, there's been DCs for such, and people have been fired for, for, for instances where they have defrauded uh, the, the system in one way or another. So I'm, I'm raising this from a context that says, we are very, very serious about matters of corruption, about making sure that there's good, clean governance in the system, and also making sure that the processes and the systems are fair, and that we are also able to make sure that the delivery of the services is done to the South Africans. I will be clear to say that what really pulled us to this 70 something range is because of the area where we got 52%. If honorable members look at the other areas, we've got areas where uh, there is 100% in quarter one, we've got areas where there's 90 something percent, We've got areas where it's 80 something percent, but where we got 40 something percent, then it drags the others. 
And at the end of the day, what we are doing is to make sure that as management collective, concerted effort is put to ensure that we clear all those areas which actually gave us the challenges. But there are some things that at the end of the day, we will achieve. There will be some things that we will not be able to achieve, but we will have achieved the majority of the things that we have actually targeted to do. The, the issues around the I think I've spoken to the issues around the expenditure. I'm trying to see because let me go back to um, the, the the questions that were raised by Honorable uh, Mutega right at the beginning. When it comes to fruitless and wasteful expenditure, and the acting CFO will come in and 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 then speak a little bit more on this. As we said last week, there will be, when you're running an operation of 2.4 billion, there will be some, some degree of loss, not material loss, but there will be some degree of loss. Now, an example will be one books a flight and the person gets sick. The agency may be able to give us back the actual flight ticket money, but they won't be able to give us back the taxes for the airport. They will also not be able to give back their own fee. But that will go into fruitless and wasteful expenditure. So those kinds of things will happen in any operation. And that's, that is why even when we look at uh, across all the other uh, programs, uh, the, other, the other departments, even when one is looking at uh, private sector financials, there will be some, some degree of loss, but not material, not material. And that's, that's, that's where the emphasis is. And what then has management done about that? that is the most critical aspect. And in these particular instances, um, then recovery takes place where we find that this is due to negligence um, and, and certain things not being followed through in a particular way and so on. Then we, we, we pursue that particular recovery. It would, it would be inappropriate of me to say to parliament that we will not have fruitless and wasteful expenditure. It will be misleading uh, because those are things that and always, and uh, Honorable Muteka uses the word unforeseeable. Uh, yes, uh, some of them are, you, you can foresee, but not the exact event that indeed in an environment like this, there will be something like that. Unavoidable, yes, unavoidable. Um, and, and those are the, the, the challenges that, that, uh, that we meet with. Now, the second one, uh, that Honorable Mteka had raised, I think, was related to, to the TEF, uh, and I think I've, I've spoken to, to that matter. I will, I will then, uh, no, he had spoken to irregular. Uh, we, we did not report any irregular expenditure in CAD in this current financial year. Uh, we, we reported on irregular expenditure that comes from the previous uh, financial year. Um, I, I, I am going to request uh, uh, DDG uh, Program 4 and, and DDG Program 1, as well as uh, acting DDG for today for Program 3 uh, and acting CFO to briefly uh, deal with uh, the other areas that I was not uh, able to cover. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, DG. Uh, thank you, DG. 
Uh, thank you, um, uh, honorable members. I am going to um, uh, deal with uh, about four of uh, questions that um, uh, uh, have been raised in particular with regards to program four. DG has already taken some of the issues um, that I had raised in terms of the uh, reporting on the, on the, on the performance. Um, I note that the one that a DG has taken with regards to uh, uh, the appointment of a service provider that did not meet the triple BEE criteria um, and also been able to um, uh, uh, add on to the DG's uh, response that the service provider was not appointed. It was through the vigilance of the department in checking uh, the, the meeting of a criteria that we discovered that even though the service provider had scored high on functionality, they missed um, the, the, the triple BEE points and we therefore did not appoint, but had to restart the, 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 the process. Um, members, in terms of the um, uh, training to upskill um, uh, or skill um, uh, uh, to, to, to upskill um, uh, in, 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 in the sector, we are guided by the tourism sector human resource development strategy. And in terms of the capacity building programs that we have, uh, the chefs, the winemaking, uh, food and bev, uh, including the tourist guides where we are empowering um, our tourist guides with a, a foreign language. And um, uh, we are again um, uh, 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 putting the uh, chefs uh, through the recognition of prior and learning so that they can obtain a, a qualification. Uh, there was also a question around the, um, uh, uh, whether or not uh, in terms of the programs that we, we have been behind, uh, whether um, uh, implementation, uh, uh, looking at um, uh, 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 the, 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 the programs being active. And yes, we can say, uh, except where service providers have not been appointed in all instances where we have appointed recruitment selection and induction has happened um, uh, uh, as when as and when the the, the, risk, um, the, the, the restrictions uh, uh, were lifted we are at a place in the majority of our programs where learners are in class and learners are now taken through the experiential um, learning through the um, a, a placement in the in the workplaces. Another question concerning domestic tourism in terms of the development of a concept during the second quarter and the terms of reference. And then in the of the first quarter, in the first quarter, we are again mentioning that there was a need to develop um, a new um, a, a, a concept. In the department, before we can embark on the uh, procurement process. Um, uh, we have introduced a, um, a which, which normally um, a, a is a precursor to um, a, a procuring and a, a sending through a, a adverts for a calling on interested parties to be able to bid. We will develop a, 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 a concept and, a, and some um, a, a terms of reference just for us to get approval that yes, we don't have capacity in the in the department or where we need um, a, a, we don't have the expertise and the accounting officer will then look at the, the, the concept and, a, a, and ensure that there will be value for, for money and indeed we do need um, a, the, 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 the 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 services or the products that we will be will be buying and on the basis of that we'll approve in the first quarter when the concept was presented. Um, it fell short, there were gaps that were identified as we were discussing it. And um, in particular, the gap related to the, 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 the information and management tool to track implementation of the discounts that we were proposing to be able to incentivize a travel in, 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 in the domestic um, a, a, a space. So we, 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 we had to go back and revise and uh, this concept come up with a new concept that will begin to address uh, this gap in the, in, in the domestic um, uh, 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 tourism um, uh, 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 concept. 
and that we are in the process of, 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 of doing, we should be able to finalize on in that. But I must assure members that in terms of the other elements of rejuvenating domestic tourism, we are, we are, we are continuing with the, with the, with the, with the campaigns. Um, uh, I have alluded to the ones that were done in quarter three, two, in two provinces, and the ones that we are scheduling for, 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 for quarter four. So it is just that one aspect where we are dealing with um, a discounting for, 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 for travelers. And in terms of the, 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 the and, 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 and really in the lesson that we have learned in terms of the development of, of concepts uh, uh, that had, um, uh, had some impact in terms of uh, procurement processes is that um, we, we better believe um, uh, the planning, the approval of the concepts um, uh, to the business plan such that when um, we bring um, in, 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 uh, programs into the APP, already they are approved and then we, we, we begin to implement. Unfortunately, this, 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 this financial year, the year under review, there were a lot of um, uh, procurement processes that have been targeted. We have learned our lessons, we are shying away from doing that, um, uh, uh, we are planning in the business uh, uh, plan, and then when they come through, they will come through as ready to implement um, a, 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 a project. Um, DG, I think I have taken uh, all the questions that uh, I have been able to make. Or oh, there was um, a, 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 a requirement that um, is it possible that we can be able to provide the, the we quantify the, 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 the retrenched youth uh, that have been recruited in our in our program um, uh, per province. Yes, we can be able to do that. We will have an opportunity to consolidate uh, across all um, uh, 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 programs and break them down per, per province and be able to supply um, the committee with um, the, the, the consolidated report. Thank you. Um, thank you, DG. Um, I will deal with the questions on vacancies and the performance management and development system. At the beginning of the financial year, just a bit of context, the department started with 57 vacant positions. Um, 34 of those positions were therefore prioritized. Um, the 2021-2022 financial year is the, actually the first year of the implementation of budget cuts by National Treasure. And from the departmental allocation, 48 million from compensation of employees uh, was cut. Therefore, the 34 posts which were previously prioritized were not fully funded given the implementation of the budget cuts. But you will also note that at the end of September 2021, the spending on compensation of employees was at 49%, when the target was actually 50%. We, when the budget planning um, was done for, for COE in the previous financial year, it was also with the understanding that government will not be paying increases. When that decision was taken to pay, the department then had to cover the expenditure from the current allocation. Um, during the AENE process, Treasury then made available 7.7 .7 million to cover amongst other the annual increase. And post the AENE process, the process of filling positions was therefore resuscitated in the third quarter. Um, and we are fast tracking it to ensure that all positions that are funded uh, can be filled. We are intending to finalize our recruitment plan to ensure that funded positions are filled by 1 April 2020. So the, the filling of positions was therefore affected by the two dynamics that I have therefore um, explained. 
the capacity within HR, we do not have the ideal post-establishment as a result of funding constraints. But with um, the capacity that we have, we are able to execute the, our responsibilities and to properly uh, support programs in the implementation of human resources functions. The vacancy at the end of the second quarter was constrained by, amongst other, where we had the vacancy rate increasing to 12.5, was constrained by, amongst other, the changes in the executive announced in August, because the support staff in ministry for the former minister terminated at the end of September 2020. And therefore, it increased the vacancy rate. And new appointments were only finalized at the beginning of the third quarter. The vacancy rate has therefore Im improved. We have decreased from the 12.5 in the second quarter. And at the end of the second, third quarter, we were at 10.7. With the implementation of the recruitment plan, we will see um, a vacancy rate of less than 10% by the end of the financial year. On PMDS, value for money and the system, the assessment of employees um, is part of a collective agreement for level 12 and below. Um, and the assessment um, takes place through a regulated process. Um, at SMS level in particular, there are specific dimensions that we take into consideration. One is the performance agreement that will therefore be signed based on the job description. Um, but in the assessment, the first level uh, belongs to the supervisor who will ensure that performance uh, targets are met where they are not met, improvement plans are adopted to remedy the situation. The second level is the moderation of performance by various moderation committee, committees. And in that process, um, the committees moderate based on three dimensions. One is the performance agreement. Two is the organizational performance based on the APP. Three, we take into consideration the opinion and findings by Auditor General of South Africa. Um, so when a decision is finally taken on the outcome of an employee's assessment, it will have taken those dynamics um, into consideration. Um, the matter related to supply chain and the CFO's position, DG has already responded to. Thank you. Thank you, DG. Uh, DDG Malan. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, DG. Um, Honorable Chair, I think um, DG has responded to, to the questions from a number of honorable members around the, uh, uh, the process of the tourism sector recovery plan. Perhaps just to add that the Secretariat confirmed with me yesterday that um, the panel has uh, indeed completed the report and it will be submitted to, 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 to the executive. So um, they, uh, that is where we are at the moment. In terms of the question from Honorable Winkler around man whether Minister has done any engagement with the sector, I can confirm that Minister had a, a number of, of engagement with the sector, starting off with uh, an engagement uh, that was open for anyone that wanted to join um, the link in, in September, just to get a sense from um, the sector uh, uh, around how, how they are doing and, and where their concerns are. Following that, indeed, Manmeg uh, did happen. Uh, we, of course, Minister and Deputy Minister um, engage with, with uh, MECs. Uh, Minister also had targeted meetings on, on specific matters, um, including um, the so-called rate listing, and that expanded to meetings with um, uh, relevant uh, embassies um, 
attending UNWTO uh, General Assembly. So just in, in short to, to do give con um, confirmation that indeed um, Minister did meet and will continue to meet with all stakeholders, including uh, private sector stakeholders. Thank you very much, um, VG Honorable Chair. Thank you, DG. Um, I would like to just start by touching on the fruitless wasteful expenditure. I think DG has already uh, explained that um, some of these um, causes of the fruitless and wasteful expenditure is unavoidable in the sense that we do get cancellations, rescheduling of, 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 of engagements, some of which um, actually um, as a result of external factors. So those will result in fruitless and wasteful expenditure. But I wish, wish to add that, um, as Digit also said, um, where we find that it is due to um, uh, individuals, we then um, do in, uh, start a process of, of recovering from those individuals if it's um, as a result of negligence on their part. Uh, and we've actually, as, as I've stated earlier in the presentation, we've, we've recovered 12,000 of the um, of the 12,000 rand expenditure that was disclosed. In terms of irregular, I think uh, DG has adequately covered that, uh, that um, uh, the questions there. Um, in terms of bids, again, um, you know, there was COVID-19 and with some members of those various committees uh, actually um, uh, falling sick due to COVID-19 uh, or uh, having to be in, on quarantine, which caused some of those committees uh, meetings to be delayed and which uh, impacted on some of the awards that had been made. Um, but I think the situation has improved in the third quarter. Um, and um, so, so, so the processes are now uh, more streamlined and, and happening as scheduled. With regard to the transfer to CIFA, we, we can report that um, we obtained a legal opinion and, and, and in terms of whether we should transfer in terms of the contract. So money has been transferred now in the third quarter um, to CFO, but that does not necessarily mean those monies can be released by the implementing agent uh, to, to beneficiaries until the issue of the court interdict has been resolved. And then, um, in terms of expenditure, I think, uh, as DJ has also pointed out earlier, um, the expenditure uh, that, you, that we presented was up to the quarter two. And up to quarter two, we should have, on a straight line analysis, been around 50%. Um, the situation has improved significantly in the third quarter. Um, I can report that uh, under program administration, we were at 41%, we are now at 66%. Um, under tourism research policy and international relations, we were at 46%. We are now at 91% spent. And this is largely due to the SAT transfer, which became due in the third, the, the, the bulk amount, the second bulk payment became due in the third quarter, which was paid. Um, in terms of destination development, um, quarter three, we've moved from 20% to 62%, largely due to those um, EPWP projects, especially around skills and training coming on stream, which had been delayed previously. Um, that now sits at 62%. Um, in, in terms of program four, tourism sector support services, we now sit at 65% uh, where it was 10% previously. And there it's uh, particularly driven by the 180 million rand payment that we've made to CEFA in terms of the contract. So, so, so there is a significant improvement into quarter three. And I think that trend will continue into quarter four um, because a lot of the EPW projects now are on track and in, in, field, in the field basically. Uh, and the uptake of the, the, the budget is, 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 is being felt. Um, that's in terms of the, the improvement in the, in the spending. 
I think uh, um, that's also my side uh, in terms of, uh, of responses. So I think most of the questions were around the spending uh, in terms of the, late, the la or the lack of it uh, related to finance and, 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 and I've given you the update in terms of where we are at this quarter three. So the trajectory we are on, we, we should be able to spend uh, the bulk of our budget come financial year end. Um, we will obviously report in quarter three uh, further on the progress made uh, for quarter three, and then, um, as I as I mentioned, this trajectory should should take us to spending the bulk of our budget by the by the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, me. Honourable Chairperson, just for 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 more transparency, under the tourism incentive program, the area that we will uh, realize some savings is in the area of uh, within the area of uh, market access, and uh, in the main, this is because. Uh, the, the target it shows uh, did not necessarily take place. And as such, uh, the, we couldn't take businesses to those places where the shows were not necessarily then taking place. And, and I think that that's, that's one area important to just highlight so that when you see some of that under expenditure uh, come end of the year, you should not necessarily be caught by surprise. I'll hand over back to the DM. No, thank, thank you, DG, and uh, thanks, uh, members, for the for the comment and questions uh, and the responses that has been given uh, by the by the officials. Uh, to, to just briefly to to emphasize some of the points that DG and the officials have raised. One that. Uh, the the emphasis that the thirty six percent expenditure it's is as of the end of a, the thirtieth of September, uh, which in terms of the straight line by treasurer, uh, if if we use a straight line a system, which in most cases is not is not possible. Uh, depending on the project that you are implementing, uh, uh, we are at thirty six. We are at as, as for this reporting period thirty six percent, which is a, a, a shortfall of fourteen percent. Uh, not justifiable. It is that, that like, uh, the fourteen percent under expenditure. It's not. It's not necessarily sixty four percent. It's fourteen percent under expenditure. In the reporting period, not justifiable though, but the, the there is an explanation as to why we find ourselves in that in that situation. Uh, as as we have indicated under the service uh, environment situation, that the the delta variant uh, made the system not to work. Uh, there was a lot of restrictions during the first quarter, uh, which 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 made it impossible to do some of the things that we we plan to do in the in the first quarter, uh, and therefore that resulted towards a, some of the work not being carried. But uh, the second issue that the DG has clarified, we want to emphasize, is about the global market. Uh, yes, we are buying local. Uh, we source uh, everything local, but the fact of the matter is that we we source it from the market, which is the local market. But some of the material that the local market that we sort does not have, it must carry it abroad. So, so if there is a global crisis, you will then have the same problem. Uh, I know, for example, a uh, uh, the there was a time when we needed a, in another environment uh, 
computers. Uh, and, and we're told, no, the, the supply of computers, not in the department, in another environment. Uh, uh, when we wanted some 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 conscientious officers to be to be provided with computers, we're told no, the market is the, is global, it's not available, and that affects uh, the supply uh, uh, of those equipment uh, because locally some of them are not are not being produced, uh, and then they must be sold somewhere uh, globally for 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 them. The, the, then on the on the issue of 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 wasteful and fruitless expenditure, it's a matter that uh, we we are monitoring very closely, and and we want and we it is our view that it should not happen. Uh, but uh, there are instances that becomes beyond uh, anybody's control uh, that you will end up landing in a situation like that. That's why when there's a fruitless and wasteful expenditure, it must be investigated, determine the, 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 the reason behind that, whether there was negligence on any part of an individual. Then if there was any negligence, then a, that individual then take responsibility. And on a regular expenditure, a, as, as the teachers indicated, we don't have a currently in this period any regular expenditure, regular expenditure that you are reporting is the one that was uh, declared by the AG uh, in the last financial year, which after engagement with the, with the AG, there was an agreement that it, the matter must be taken up with the chief uh, a financial officer in the, in the operation officer in, the, in, in treasury. Uh, to be able then to advise and determine the, the extent of which this is irregular. And then once the determination has been made, uh, it, it, then the department will then to, to then make an investigation as to what, what happened, was, was there any loss on the part of the department? Uh, was there any element of fraud uh, or corruption in the process? And then arising from that, then be able to take a decision what must be done in order to make sure that it doesn't it, it happen in future going forward. So, so we are we are trying our best to make sure that there's no recurrence uh, of the findings uh, by the by the auditor general, as presented last week in terms of the measures that we are putting in place to to avoid that. And then on the on the on the policy review uh, process, uh, the process ongoing, as you know, uh, the, the, there was a briefing to the to the ministry. Uh, uh, the process was taken to Minmec. Uh, Minmec was able to have their views, uh, and then the, the 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 review panel was then mandated to consult widely as practical possible with a view of making sure that there's no single stakeholder that is left out. So when they were busy with that, you know, then there was the, 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 the restructuring of the of the, of, of cabinet, uh, which necessitated that then you had a, a new minister who must then also be taken on board uh, afresh on these matters and be able to give her view on how then the process unfold. So we are on that path that we are busy with in relation to that. Uh, and then the the engagement with Afro Forum in the context of the uh, litigation that they've made in relation to the equity fund. Uh, you 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 will recall that uh, this matter started during the tourism uh, uh, relief fund, and then an engagement by the then minister did take place, and during that engagement there was a, an understanding that a, there is a, a consensus in relation to how the matter has been approached, but uh, uh, after. Uh, in the meeting, but outside the meeting, uh, Afriform proceeded with the 
with the challenge uh, to the court and all the processes, as you know, what has happened after, after that. And then when we introduced the, the tourism, launched the tourism equity fund, the same, same process ensued. Engagement took place, but still they are fundamentally con convinced that you no, know, it is not appropriate. Uh, and then they then took the method to court for uh, in litigation to stop the department to proceed. Uh, so the department was then uh, interdicted. So so we are we are we are looking at what as the DG has indicated what could be the other practical solution because we need this is a policy position uh, that was taken. Uh, uh, some years back uh, uh, to say how then do we make sure that we transform the industry and that's the main basic tool uh, that we have uh, from a policy point of view to transform the sector uh, which solidarity and other forum they are opposed to the transformation agenda uh, it, it's not. It's not just the, 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 them representing the interest of the stakeholders. We had the engagement with various stakeholders, and 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 some of them were saying, "No, they don't represent us. Uh, 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 these people. We we have been battling all these years. We wanted to say, how do we participate in this transformation agenda? And we didn't have a tool." And now the tool that we've introduced as government, it will, be a, it will enable us to transform this industry. We'll have now an opportunity to share some of our, of our products to, to black, uh, to women, to people with disability, uh, which is something that we, we, we didn't have an opportunity to do because uh, the banks were not willing to come into the pit, into the party and all other matters. So the intervention by government is therefore highly welcome. But we have got this problem that uh, we are confronted with uh, arising from Afro Forum and Solidarity. So as the DG is saying, we, we, we need to see how then do we short circuit the process if it is possible to short circuit it uh, so that we, we, we don't keep on delaying it longer than it is, because it's now almost to approaching a year uh, since the, 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 the launch. Uh, and therefore, it, 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 it doesn't augur well uh, in terms of transformation agenda that we want to pursue. And therefore, it is critical that we need to, to, to get an alternative way of dealing with this matter. Uh, if there is a way, it's a matter that we need to to, to put our heads together and 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 see how best do we deal with that. It's a very it's a very fundamental policy that has been, I mean, praised by even international market. That it, this has never been seen anywhere in the world. In South Africa, it's 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 it's, 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 it's transformation agenda. It's, 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 it's very exemplary in, in sense. But you, you, you know, we've got forces that are always fundamentally opposed to transformation uh, at all times. And then they will fight and make sure that it doesn't, doesn't succeed. So, but it's a, it's, a, it's a matter that we're determined to make sure that it does succeed at the end. And then the, 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 the feeling of vacancies, I'm sure the DDG in uh, Boinga is dealt with it. Uh, and then we are pursuing that matters where that's in, where those vacancies need to be filled. The issue of the CFO is a matter that needs to be prioritized, we agree, uh, so that we're able to make sure that we, we, we stabilize the, 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 the financial section of the department and be able to make sure that the supply chain processes they are managed smoothly in a manner that we will able to to fast track service delivery because as you you know as you have re reflected and in the report itself 
that most of the the, the, the weaknesses uh, are as a result of uh, the supply chain processes not being uh, managed uh, to the level that enables a, a speedy resolutions a, of, 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 of service delivery at the end. And those are issues that we need to, to improve on it. Uh, the, then on the, on the partnership, uh, it, it's, it's a matter that we are working, the various types of partnership that we are including community partnership, community projects, uh, that a, the department is working on. We're working with various uh, entities, uh, uh, sun parks as part of the partnership to upskill and improve the, uh, the, 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 the industry in a manner that uh, enables us to be able to be having necessary skilled people, but at the same time create opportunities for, for young people uh, who are the most affected. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the presidential stimulus, uh, now there were some projects, there are some projects that uh, have been included as part of the presidential stimulus. The numbers might not be equivalent to the one from the Department of Education. Uh, because of its magnitude. But there is some work that uh, are related to the stimulus that uh, what is part of the massification uh, of creation of jobs in the context of the economic reconstruction and recovery plan by government. So there is some work that uh, uh, the department is doing in relation to that. But I hope and believe that as we, as we, as we report a, a uh, comprehensively towards the end of the year, uh, we will be able to give a better picture of the totality of what is it that we have contributed in the economic reconstruction and recovery plan. Yeah, basically, I, sh I should think that that's, that's what I can I can raise share. Thanks. Chair, are you there? Chairperson. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, um, uh, DG and your team. Um, I, I know you, Honorable Gomba. Honorable Gomba. Yes, Honorable Chair, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Chair, my questions are very short and only two of them. Um, it, I want to ask the question about the 177,000 rent which was spent and it was not allocated for anything. And, uh, and it means the money was spent unallocated. And also it means that the Auditor General is going to have now a finding of the uh, uh, irregular expenditure on that amount. So I uh, just want to find out maybe the department did something or maybe communicated with the treasury to get some concurrence to use those funds because we cannot just use money which is not allocated without Concurrence if it's not allocated. Otherwise, it's a finding itself if it's not done. And the second question, ma'am, uh, Madam Chair, is about the performance management. And I thank um, our official for responding to that. But also, a, a question that emanates from her response is that uh, the, the performance management, you know, due to the uh, um, According to the performance management, they are supposed to have um, a, 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 a have a question management for those who did not perform according to the 
performance agreement. So were there any consequence management or were they just giving the PMS an, uh, an, an appraisal as, as normal without going through the process of, of, of dealing with that before appraisals? And also the process, um, and also those people, maybe you find that the consequence management also with regards to the Auditor General's report findings to all those individuals who were appraised and paid like nothing happened when the uh, Auditor General also did get some findings from those individuals in the department. Were there any punishment coming to those appraisals and performance management appraisals? Thank you. Uh, Madam thank Chair. you. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Honorable Winkler. Uh, are your, were your questions, was you have typed your questions into the chat group, were they adequately responded to? Honorable Winkler, um, the two the the question that was the two questions that were raised by the Honorable Gomba lately, uh, on the acting CFO and also uh, the manager responsible for Program One, can you respond to the two questions uh, precisely? Um, thank you, Chair. The matter related to PMDS. Um, PMDS um, by nature is a, is a developmental um, system or it has um, developmental um, roots. Um, hence, we call it the performance management and development system. Um, the consequence management comes uh, much later. What therefore happened is um, as employees are being, if employees' performance is being reviewed, there is a process where performance is not in line with the target or as expected to therefore adopt an enhancement plan. And part of the enhancement plan requires that additional support is provided by both the supervisor and the program, which may include other measures uh, like training or mentorship, uh, coaching, um, exposure by peers and related. It is only when those measures have proven to have failed um, and that it is um, therefore being dealt with as a consequence management and where it will um, indicate areas related to negligence by the employee. The moderation and the, the both the assessment and, moder and the moderation will take into consideration the outcome of the um, performance information and AG and where employees are uh, found to have contributed to adverse finding. That is therefore considered in the allocation of, of the final score. Um, um, the matter related to poor performance will therefore be addressed as part of consequence management in terms of the process that is therefore um, outlined. Uh, but um, the moderation um, chair and honorable members will therefore take into consideration those findings and in awarding rewards, uh, um, that uh, um, assessment will therefore have been considered and the appropriate um, reward will therefore be allocated. Um, CFO, may I request that you deal with the first one? Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, DDG. Um, a response to Honorable Member regarding that 177,000. Um, in the process, um, we do not, uh, that relates to uh, losses that have been written off. And the department doesn't necessarily um, budget for losses. And the type of losses we are looking at here are for uh, vehicles, for example, that might 
get damaged in an accident and um, we have a third party that might be involved um, in, in the accident with a government vehicle, for example. And, um, you know, we go through the process. We don't find our driver negligent. Um, and, and in that process, we actually still have to pay for the damages to, that are incurred to the state vehicle. And that is written off as a, as a um, loss. Uh, so what you see there are losses that are not necessarily uh, budgeted for. Um, and the other type of um, loss that we uh, have in this category of, of payment, that is payment for financial assets, relate to uh, debts that are taken on. And you will find that the debtor, um, for some reason, um, puts forward the motivation why the debt might be written off for valid and allowed reasons in terms of policy and those uh, debts are written off. So those are the two categories of payments that are made against this item. And, uh, and just to reiterate, we don't, um, it's not, not we, the budget process doesn't allow for one to budget uh, for such losses. Um, uh, I hope I've adequately answered that question, uh, Honorable Member. Thank you. Uh, thank you, CFO and uh, 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 manager responsible for program one. You have adequately responded to the uh, two questions. <coughs> Honorable members, uh, that brings us to the conclusion of our engagement with the department in terms of their reporting uh, for, for program for the, for the first and the second quarter. Uh, honorable members, uh, we will now uh, allow the department to exit the system and then honorable members will remain for us to uh, conclude our meeting. Uh, can Mr. Poltina and Dr. Kuzo assist us with flighting the agenda so that we can take a decision whether we can continue with the remaining items uh, as per our adopted agenda. Honorable members, in terms of our adopted agenda, we were also going to look into the uh, draft committee program for TEM2, but and also look into the a draft a minutes. Are we in the po in a position at this time? A, a, because we ask, we are close to half past one. A, are we in a position to continue with these two items? Can I get a guidance from honorable members who, if there is still an appetite for us to be engaging and deliberating on these two items? Honorable Chair, can I speak? Uh, I note you, Honorable Melina Gomba. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, these two um, items are familiar to us, and I think we can can do that. We can deal with them within a few seconds. Thank you. Honorable Gomba has. Um, suggested uh, or proposed that we continue with our items. Uh, Mr. Poltina, can you take us through the draft program? Uh, okay, Th thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Uh, Chair, as we, we have indicated um, even, even last week, the, the, the program that the committee we have in front of us uh, is already an approved uh, committee program. Uh, members will see now we are at uh, item number two, Tuesday the 1st of February. Uh, we are almost done with that. Uh, from there, we will go next week um, on the Tuesday, the 8th of February, then we will be dealing with the, with the, with the South African tourism. They will also be doing the same, uh, presenting their first quarter and the second quarter 
uh, performance uh, report for 2021 uh, 2022 chairperson and then on the 10th chair although this one is in the calendar of parliament on the 10th of february there will be a joint sitting at seven o'clock uh, for the state of the nation address and then thereafter on the 15th of february uh, our researcher and the content advisor, they will uh, assist the committee uh, with the issues that will be emanating from that state of the nation address that relates uh, specifically to our sector as, as a tourism sector. They will give us that analysis, Chairperson. And then on the 22nd uh, of February, Chair, we have already a planned meeting with the, with the national registrar and uh, provincial registrar of tour guides uh, because we want them to talk to us on this issue of centralized database and provincial databases. Uh, the committee will recall that some time ago AG raised this issue, um, uh, um, sorry, the, the department raised this as also a, an issue that also had uh, posed some challenges to them because as they were giving funding, uh, it came out that those people's names that were submitted to, to them um, were really, uh, some of the names were not supposed to, to receive those, those, those benefits. And then the 23rd chair is also uh, as well. Mr. Mr. Hello, Paul, chair? Hello, chair? Yes, yes uh, can I propose that we, 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 we end at those items because nothing okay, has well, changed. Okay. Okay. Nothing has fundamentally changed in terms of yeah. our adopted programs. We are still continuing with our program. And yeah. when in, in, in the future, we'll only be speaking to items that have fundamentally changed or uh, uh, differed from, from perhaps we, we, we've invited a, a, a particular organization and they're not able to come so that we can speak to uh, putting another item for the, for the proposed day. Uh, but, but as, as things stand, nothing has changed from our program. It is yeah. a, the, still the same adopted program that we are following. Can I then... Uh, uh, Excellent, move? Chair. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Boltina. Can we then move to item the item which speaks to our uh, minutes? The minutes have been circulated from last week. Uh, I received the minute. We re we all received because I saw all of us were on the on the uh, mailing list. Uh, by Thursday, uh, we have we have received the minutes of the meeting of the twenty fifth of February of January. Uh, honourable members, can I invite? And I I I believe that as we receive minutes, we go through them. Uh, can I invite an honorable member to move for the adoption of the minutes as a true reflection of what uh, transpired in our portfolio committee, uh, which took place on the 25th of January. That started at nine o'clock and ended uh, after, just after 12 noon. Honorable Chair. I know you, Honorable uh, M. Komba. Yes, Honorable Chair, I will move for the adoption of the minutes. Can I get a seconder? Honorable members. Honorable members who are on the platform, who were part of the meeting. I will second it. I will second it, Honorable Winkler. Okay, thank you, Honorable uh, Winkler. Uh, honorable members, the minutes are duly adopted as a true reflection of what transpired in our portfolio committee meeting, which took place on the 25th of January. Uh, members, we have now come to the conclusion of the uh, meeting of the 1st of February. Can I take this opportunity to thank you for particip actively participating and pursuing uh, areas of interest uh, in terms of our um, objectives of uh, uh, doing a robust oversight uh, on the department. And can I then also just uh, uh, apologize for us dragging the meeting or the meeting taking uh, longer than it should 
but it was engagements and in, in, in responses that were, were, were pursued and were engaged upon as the portfolio committee because we need to iron out issues in the portfolio committee and we cannot all the time speak about the in the interest of time in the inter interest of time because if we are able if we are to do a uh, justice to what we have been a uh, uh, mandated or deployed to do as members of parliament we must engage with the department robustly so and we must pursue uh, answers where we feel that uh, responses are not adequately uh, being given. In those few, with those few words, uh, honorable members, uh, allow me to say that we have come to the conclusion of the meeting and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. Long live the Chair. Malibongo, Chair.